to the following presentation of the Southeastern Conference. There won't be a better Thanksgiving atmosphere than here at Vaught Hemingway Stadium in Oxford, Mississippi, in the 119th meeting between Ole Miss and Mississippi State. And today we give thanks and reflect on everything we should be grateful for. But as Wright Thompson explains, this day in Mississippi means something more. It's Thanksgiving night in Mississippi. Egg bowl time. Empty all the wild game from the freezer time. Whiskey and styrofoam cup time. State fans and Ole Miss fans are making turkey sandwiches on white bread with homemade mayonnaise. Digging into cheese straws and duck gumbo and dove stew. Oh, look out for an INT! It is picked up! 44 yards. Hell yes, damn right they're ready in Drew and in Bentonia, Halen State in Clarksdale and in Jackson, rocking in the Delta in the hills. And the inside, it's good! Most of the state has settled in for the next few hours. We're in maroon and white sweatpants and red and blue sweatshirts, or maybe mossy oak from head to toe. Televisions are on at hunting camps across the levee and in DeSoto County subdivisions and in oceanfront cottages on the coast. It's Thanksgiving night in Mississippi. Family time. Tradition time. And this could get ugly. I guess it's already gotten ugly. And the Egg Bowl is now. Thank you, Wright. The Egg Bowl begins with the Nissan pregame drive. No amount of bird, beer, or blessings will temper the excitement for this annual Magnolia State matchup that is never short on hate and football memories that for these fans last a lifetime. And depending on what side you're on, a long 365 days. And with that, welcome in. Happy Thanksgiving. Lewis Riddick, Matt Berry alongside. We have been waiting for this one for quite some time, Lewis. We started our Thursday night college football journey at the Backyard Brawl. We end it with another great rivalry game. I mean, Matt, seriously, how lucky are we, man? I mean, rivalries are what college football is all about. We started off this 2022 season at the Backyard Brawl. We ended here with the Egg Bowl, where the vitriol and the hate between the fan bases is as real as it gets. You can cut it with a turkey knife here, man. I'm telling you, these people are wired for this football game. We're in store for a great one tonight. Now, if you've been around social media, you've been around this part of the country, you know the story with Ole Miss by now. Their head coach, Lane Kiffin, and his connection to the Auburn job. We are not here to speculate tonight. We are not here to validate internet reports. All we can tell you is what Lane told us in our meeting yesterday. He looked us in the eye and said there has been no job taken, and there has been no discussions about taking another job. That is what Lane told us in our meeting. What we do know for certain, he's got two great running backs he's going to lean on. On tonight. Yeah, this is fun. If you like the running game, then this is going to be the game for you. The headliner is freshman Quinshawn Judkins. He's a single season record holder in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. And he is phenomenal. He is all power between the tackles, yards after contact. His running mate, junior Zach Evans, he's the speed guy, the space guy, the guy they like to get out on the screen, on the perimeter, on screens, and on wide pass routes. And you will see him. He is a home run hitter. We cannot wait to watch. It's 101 yards left for Zach, and he can have over 1,000 yards which would be history in and of itself. On the other side with Mississippi State, they throw the ball 74% of the time, and statistically, Will Rogers, one of the best in Mississippi State history. Hey, absolutely. He is the guy who, in terms of career passing yards and passing touchdowns, he's number one. He's an NFL-caliber prospect. He loves the air raid system. He's accurate, makes good decisions. He will distribute the football to a wide variety of receiving threats, both out of the backfield and on the perimeter tonight. Look, Ole Miss has their work cut out for them to make sure they can keep a lid on this explosive Mississippi State offense. We've had a laser show. We've got turkey. We've got rivalry football. Kickoff from Vaught Hemingway Stadium is coming up next. And now we take a look inside Nissan's Heisman House. Welcome back to Thursday Night College Football. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. And when you've been playing since 1901, Harry Lyles, there's bound to be hate in a rivalry game. 
Yeah, Matt, and when we asked Lane Kiffin the difference between this rivalry and the other ones that he's coached in, he said this one is truly hateful. He said there's no handshakes, there's no hugs. With both of these teams, you've got 33 players from the state of Mississippi on Ole Miss, 56 on the Mississippi State side. You guys are going to be calling a lot of those names tonight, like a Will Rogers, like a Jonathan Mingo, like an Austin Williams. When we asked Lane Kiffin to kind of explain the rivalry a little bit further, he said, well, all you have to do is look at Malik Heat's mother. He with him transferring from Mississippi State to Ole Miss because she was like, I might face repercussions at work. I'm afraid to come to this ball game. Guys, on a day when we are supposed to gather and appreciate one another and everything that we have, there is going to be no shortage of hate in this building tonight. Harry, thank you. Ole Miss has won the toss. They will receive Lane Kiffin 2-0 against Mike Lee since both of them have taken over these programs. Ben Raybon to kick it off. Dayton Wade to receive. So the last thing you want to do is give Lane Kiffin some good field position. Maybe just that. That's where we bring Bobby out Lewis Jackson Dart. Place on the 35 yard line. Yeah, Lewis Jackson Dart, the transfer from USC. He's a guy who has made nothing but steady progress, Matt. All during the course of this season, Lane Kiffin told us, "Look, he had to go back and rethink the way he was coaching this young man, considering the offense that he came from at USC, an air raid type of offense, into a much more structured offense here that requires a lot of very exquisite foot." work and ball handling, all the different formations, how quick they like to go. But he has been up to the challenge. And I'll tell you what, this was a fun guy to talk to. We're going to have some great stories for you tonight about this young man, Jackson Dark. Ball spotted at the 35, kicked out of bounds. Judkins in the backfield. Dart the play fake, takes a shot. Has Heath, Malik Heath, the Mississippi State transfer. First big play for Ole Miss, gain of 28. And this game last year from Mississippi State, one catch, five yard. He's already surpassed that. Offensive on the first coordinator play. Charlie Weiss Jr. told us Malik Heath was a guy they want to get going early. When you get him touches early, he gets dialed in quick. Great start. Don't blink and you'll miss it. Another quick completion. That one to Dayton Wade, the walk-on, tackled by Emmanuel Forbes. Another guy who they're excited about. Look, they're excited about so many of these perimeter players because they have got great body types, great game-breaking ability, as you're seeing already in the first two plays. That's Mingo in motion. That's where he goes with the ball, does Jackson Dart. Mingo has space to the outside. First down, Ole Miss. Tempo continues. The Cameron Johnson, Richardson rather, brings him down. You see them running right now. You see them running 10 personnel. Four wide receivers on the field, no tight end. When they go that way, Jonathan Mingo works out of the slot, as you just saw. And that's Watkins at a gain of four. We've had some ball plays. We've only been a minute into the game. <laughs> I was about to say, folks, just take a breath. We're having to take a breath up here in the booth because this is at a frenetic pace, man. But it's organized. This is exactly what Lane wants to do, throw a lot of stuff at people as fast as they can go. He says people don't think you can be complicated and be fast at the same time. He goes, well, I've proven that wrong, and they're showing it to you right now. Yet to see Judkins take the ball. Dart keeps it. Mississippi State aware of it. Nathaniel Watson brings him down. No game. That's just a nice job there by Jet Johnson getting in on the play as well as Watson and making sure they get Jackson Dart on the ground. Jackson Dart, as, well, as good as he is as a thrower, he's a guy who also loves to run the football. He likes the physical side of the game. In this RPO game, you'll see him carry it a few times tonight. Big third and six, first possession, Rebels. Quick shot outside to Mingo. And another good job by the Bulldogs defense. That's Forbes. And it looks like Lane's going to send out the field goal unit. For a man who loves analytics and trying to get touchdowns, he's going to send out Jonathan Cruz after the Bulldogs do a great job slowing them down. That's a nice job inside the red zone, inside the 20 of defensive coordinator Zach Arnett's defense affirming up playing aggressive, playing downhill. That's one of the things you can't do against this RPO-based offense. You can't play passive. you got to attack the line of scrimmage. Nice job by the secondary of making some big plays there by Emmanuel Forbes at the end. 32-yard attempt for Cruz. And Ole Miss gets the points on their first possession of the game. Don't blink and you'll miss it. <laughs> If you're already experiencing your turkey nap, wake up. It's going to be fun. 3 nothing, Ole Miss, first possession of the game.
the great things about college football rivalries, the history of this game. First game played October 28, 1901. Ole Miss leads the series 64, 45, and 6, including two in a row. And this game has been played on Thanksgiving 23 times. It's become a holiday tradition around here as Ole Miss drove down the field. They got a field goal. They lead 3-0. One of the better special teams units in the country back to receive that Xavion Thomas lets it bounce, recovers, tries to get outside. Makes a man miss and a good start for Mississippi State. Okay. I was just going to say, well, I'll tell you, look, I, I jumped the gun a little bit. That's only because special teams is going to be exciting for this team tonight, Matt. You already mentioned it. The fact that, look, Tulu Griffin, is one of the best returners in all of college football. This team, as far as being an average starting field position, is one of the best in all of FBS. And it is going to play a big role because they can absolutely turn a game on, a game on its head with how explosive they are in the return game. Just keep your eye on it all night long. Ball spotted just shy of the 40. Will Rogers, the record-setting quarterback at Mississippi State. Quick throw to the outside. Caleb Bucking on the reception. And a gain of two. Tonight, Rodgers, with 173 yards, can move to eighth all-time in the SEC passing. Jared Lorenzen, we expect a big night out of him. Now, this air raid offense is all about quick decision-making and delivering the football with accuracy. They feel as though they always have answers no matter what you would do defensively from a coverage standpoint. They're just trying to find open areas against zone, beat one-on-one -on -one against man with shot plays. And Will Rogers, one of the very best. Is Jaquavius marks on the carry. I shame Young right there after a gain of one. Going to bring up an early third and long. If you're looking for a tone setter on Ole Miss's defense, that's it. That's your guy right there on the screen. Number one, I shame Young. He is the guy who plays with speed, plays with power, big hitting ability out of the middle of the field and when he's down in the box. Matt, you'll be calling his name a lot tonight because he will be making a lot of plays. Just 37% on the year, third down conversions for Mississippi State. Rogers pump fake, scans the field over the middle, caught. And that's Jaden Wally, and that'll be a first down Bulldog. Skate a 10. Jaden Lawley, one of the good slot players that they have on this offense, along with Austin Williams. He's a first down producing machine from the slot. You see Will Rogers pump left, come back right, scan the entire field, and deliver a strike for a first down. Prototypical Mississippi State offense. Mississippi State already in Ole Miss territory, shot across the middle. Austin Williams there. Gain of six. And there's the other half of that slot combination of Williams and Wally. They will work the middle of the field as good as any pair in college football. And as I said, they are move to change type of guys. Well, on the outside, Robert Ra Thomas, num number zero, and Caleb Ducking, number four. They're the home run hitters. That's Marks right up the middle. And Marks finds a crease to get another first down for Mississippi State. Brought down by Young after a gain of seven. Nice, subtle jump cut ability, running that inside zone, just finding the creases, keeping his feet moving. But Jaquavius Marks, Mike Leach could not be more effusive in his praise of this young man, saying he's the ultimate teammate, just does exactly what he's told, hard worker, never questions, tough. You saw it right there. So trips, top of the screen. Quick throw outside. That's Tulu Griffith. And you talk about the speed of Tulu, you saw it there. Young chases him out and a gain of 19. Tulu said, hey now, you better come up on me a little bit faster than that because I can accelerate as good as anyone. You've seen, me, you've seen what I can do on special teams. Look at that. That's stop and start quickness. That's zero to 100 in no time. The Dietrich Tulu Griffin. He'll be a fun one to watch tonight. Ball already at the 15. Marks up the middle, he continues to run hard, lowers that shoulder, gain of five, and Otis Reese makes the tackle. What a nice job of blocking that up inside. Run, had a little bit of a stunt going on inside, a little bit of a cross stunt in the A-gaps by the Ole Miss defense. They blocked it perfectly, got everybody covered up. Nice positive run. 
Rodgers, end zone, has a receiver, overthrows him. He had Wally all by himself. Aishim Young got beat on the coverage. And we'll see if Ole Miss's defense can do the same thing Mississippi State did, which is stop them deep in the territory. Yeah, you see Wally just running the seven route, the corner route against the safety. I see Young, who has inside leverage. That's a tough route to cover when the wide receiver's just running away from you down here in the red area. Better throw. That's an easy six. Ninth play of the drive. Trips to the bottom of the screen. Ole Miss showing pressure. Rodgers to Wally. Wally keeps his feet. Spots him down at the one yard line. It'll be goal to go. Gain of nine. Young brings him down. Yeah, you're expecting man coverage here down inside the 10 yard line. Wally starts to the wide side of the field. Down at the bottom of your screen. He's number three in the trips. You see him bring him in motion. And then just run him on a shallow cross. And he's got Iceem Young again trying to close top down on it. It's an almost impossible route to cover from depth. Ole Miss shows everyone. Marks up the middle. Hale State. Touchdown. If you're Mike Leach, this could not have started any better. The passing game on point. The running game. Physical. Jaquavius Marks. Great feet inside, great run vision, running with pad level, and they are blocking up this Ole Miss front seven with precision and timing. Textbook opening drive for Mississippi State. Massimo Biscardi on for the extra point. It is good. Rodgers, five of six for 47 yards on that drive. In just a tidy 10 plays, 61 yards. If you're full, you're going to love this dessert because we're just going to keep scoring till they <laughs> tell us we can't anymore. 7-3, Mississippi State. Both teams scored on their opening possession. 7-3, Mississippi State in the battle for the Golden Egg. Lewis Riddick, Matt Berry alongside. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone out there. What a physical drive for Mississippi State up front. Yeah, it's all about Mississippi State's offensive line. Watch the combination of center, the Quinston Sharp, and right guard, Cole Smith. Watch this combination block, how they get the double team on J.J. Pegues and then climb up to the second level on linebacker Ashanti Sistrunk. And that's just textbook. That's the kind of execution and physicality that you don't necessarily associate with Mississippi State's air raid. But make no mistake, this team could run the football. And LaQuinston Sharp, their center, is their most experienced player, probably their best player on that offensive line. And Jaquavius Marks. That's how you run it, young man. It's going to be Jordan Watkins returning the kick. Check that Jalen Knox returning the kick. And he's going to take it just shy of the 25-yard line. College football rivalry weekend begins Thanksgiving night. Two of our featured matchups. Florida takes on number 16, Florida State. Mike Norvell's got that thing in a good spot right now. And a big one between USC and Notre Dame, perhaps a playoff off the, on the line. Both begin 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. If there was one notable story in the first drive for Ole Miss, we did not see Quinshawn Judkins touch the ball, but they typically give him the first series, and now we'll see Zach Evans, the former five-star that transferred in from TCU. And that's Evans to the right side, and a good job by Mississippi State, and Jaden Crumity on the tackle. It's a loss of one. Well, this is an offense that challenges your fundamentals and your eyes as a second level and third level defender because of all the tricky ball handling, the pullers that sometimes lead you to the play, the pullers that sometimes are designed to distract you from where the ball's hitting. Mississippi State doing a great job. Jackson, plenty of time. Jalen Robinson there. And Colin Duncan, and this Mississippi State defense, loss of one in the first play, gain of three there, putting it all Miss in a third and long situation. But Colin Duncan, number 19, the safety, is one of the best players on this Mississippi State defense. Very good in coverage, solid tackler. They use him all over the place. He's an eraser for them. He can do so many different things. Tackling in the open field being one of them. Watson showed pressure. Dart over the middle. It's jarred loose. Mingo was the receiver. Jalen Green, the big hit. 
first incompletion for Dart. And right now, Mississippi State physical up front on offense, and the defense forces a three and out. And you just see Jalen Green with the great key and diagnose. That's what you call it as a safety. Key the quarterback, diagnose the route combination, and then just drive downhill with bad intentions, man, to separate the wide receiver from the football. And you can see defensive coordinator Zach Arnett saying, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we need in this game. That's what this rivalry is all about. It's about physical, physicality, and for as long as it takes, that's what you got to bring. It's Frazier Mason on the punt. Got a roll to inside the 25-yard line, spotted at the 23. As I said, round three between Lane Kiffin and Mike Leach, who's lost both games against Ole Miss since arriving at Mississippi State. Only two coaches in the history of the rivalry have lost their first three Egg Bowls. R.L. Sullivan from 1919 to 1921. It'll slick Morton from 49 to 51. So Mike Leach hoping to reverse that trend tonight. He's certainly off to a good start. Mike, Tr Mike Leach is a treat to talk to, man. I'll tell you what, he is funny. You don't know where he's going to go with the conversation. But I'll tell you, when you start talking about his players, he is a guy who is very much so invested in and can tell you anything you want to know about every single guy on this roster. We had a good time meeting with him this week. So first appearance of the game for Dylan Johnson. He's been banged up throughout the year. They're happy to have him back in some capacity after a gain of two to kind of take you behind the scenes on Mike Leach. We had a Zoom with him on Monday night, and, and in my backdrop, I've got an Arizona State helmet. Yeah. And the first thing he notices is the helmet, and he wanted to give me the history of the Sparky mascot. <laughs> That's Mike Leach. That's Rodgers taking a shot downfield, incomplete. Intended for Ra Ra Thomas, who they want to have a big night. DeAndre Prince on the coverage. And there's the air raid for you, right? If they can read your mail pre-snap, meaning you line up in the coverage scheme you want to play, and you don't disguise it very well. And there it was pretty obvious to see they were in single safety middle, some form of one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. They're going to throw it deep. And Ra Ra Thomas is the guy. Four TDs of 20 plus yards already in 22, in 2022. That's what he likes to do. That's what his role is on this football team. Third and eight. Rogers scans, forced out of the pocket and sacked. Tavius Robinson brings him down. And after a Bulldog stop on defense, those land sharks come right back at a loss of 12. When you hear people talk about front and coverage going together on defense, there's the perfect example. The coverage on the back end, the zone coverage, matching the patterns as they declare down the field. Will Rogers having to hold the football. Wasn't quite sure where he wanted to go with it. Didn't want to pull the trigger. Gives the time for people like Tavius Robinson to work their pass rush. And number 95 is one of the hardest, hardest working guys in this front seven core for Ole Miss. You keep working, you eventually get the sack, you get off the field. Georgopoulos punting from his own end zone, forcing back Watkins. Watkins better be careful and stay away from it. He decides to field the punt. And I'd imagine Lane Kiffin will probably have a little bit of a conversation with him after that. You could hear what was going through his mind from up here, though, couldn't you? He's going, I'm losing yards, I'm losing yards, I'm losing yards. I better field this thing. Well, he did so cleanly. And after I brag about the offense, the defense is like, take that, Matt. Two stops, we had a sack. 7-3, <laughs> Bulldogs, first quarter. Jackson Dart, a highly coveted recruit out of Utah. He was the Gatorade National High School Player of the Year. You're thinking, oh great, USC got another one. Started three games, Lewis, and then transferred here to Ole Miss. Split time with Luke Altmaier early, but he's the guy for the Rebels. And he's the guy for the Rebels offensively as well. Quinshawn Judkins on the opposite end of the dart recruiting spectrum. You bring in Judkins, a three-star and a state champion out of Alabama. He's now turned into a five-star in his own right. And they knew it early on when he got here on campus that they had somebody special because of that. The vision that he shows. You see, he can find running lanes quickly, has great feet, great balance. Lane Kiffin talked about the fact that he sees things so much sooner than what you would expect out of a typical freshman. So a gain of 10 on the first run. That one a gain of nine, and Judkins just bangs it right up there. Jet Johnson, one of those lifelong Mississippi State players, brings him down. 
And that's the one thing when you sat down with Lane and we talked about what makes Judkins so special. He just said his unique vision and his ability to see things that other players don't. Dart looked at Mingo, looked back at him. And out of the backfield. They like using Mingo out of the backfield there. Johnson and Richardson combo on it. They gain a three. Yeah, it's a nice job of playing fundamentally sound zone coverage by Jet Johnson and Richardson in the corner, sitting out on the perimeter, playing with good eyes, just being patient, letting the routes to Claire come up and tackle. Quick shot to Heath. A gate of five. Richardson there on the coverage. Malik Heath of the receivers, they said he's the bouncy one, he's the loose one, he likes to talk. Surprised we haven't seen him yet face his former Mississippi State teammates. Yeah, they'll get him going, they'll get him downfield on some shots down the field here eventually. Watkins, quick, Watkins, first down. Duncan again brings him down. You had a little bit of an alignment issue as far as the secondary trying to figure out where the receivers were deployed. Colin Duncan come, came from the left to the right to try and cover down on Watkins. It's all the space he needed. Great job by Banks and Randy Charlton and a loss of two. You talk about an embarrassment of riches for Lane Kiffin with this backfield. Having Judkins Lewis makes the whole thing go. He's just, he's a tone setter with his physicality. As is Dayton Wade, who's been earning his way on the field. Big game for Wade. The walk-on from Western Kentucky gives him a gain of 22. Look, offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss told us that as the season has gone on, he has just continued to gain the trust of the offensive coaching staff, and they get him as many touches they, as they possibly can, and you see why. Judkins again met at the line of scrimmage. It's Pickering and a loss of one. But this Ole Miss offensive line has a lot of experience on the inside. Left guard Nick Broker is the guy who really sets the tone inside. And you see this Mississippi State down line, defensive line doing a nice job of setting the line of scrimmage. Direct snap to Judkins. And a gain of three. And again, here's Ole Miss in the red zone. Kind of starting to stall out a little bit. Good job by Mississippi State. Now forcing a third and six. This has been a little bit of their Achilles heel recently, making sure that they are able to capitalize down here. Pop pass read perfectly. Dayton Wade got it. And again, Ole Miss forced to kick a field goal. The secondary players of Mississippi State right now are playing with great eyes and patience. You don't see them running all over the place, having their eyes in the wrong spot. They're playing with great key and diagnosis, and they're tackling well in the open field. You've seen Jackie Matthews, Colin Duncan, DeCamry and Richardson. They're all making plays out here in space. Emmanuel Forbes, that's exactly what you need to do against this high-octane offense that tries to spread you out and make you defend every blade of grass. 33-yard attempt from Cruz. And Cruz, two for two on his night. Fun story of how Cruz got here to Ole Miss. He was recruited by Lane Kiffin out of Charlotte because Cruz beat Kiffin while at FAU. This season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. 12 plays, 58 yards, four minutes off the clock. Yet just a field goal for Lane Kiffin and his offense. And he's just an interesting guy to be around with his philosophy on football. Told us he's going to always evolve what he's trying to do. He said the one year he did, 2016 at USC, yep. and he got fired. Yeah, he said you cannot afford to get lazy and get complacent. They spend a lot of time in the offseason. They have a whole team of analysts that watch a lot of NFL film. And they steal plays from the likes of the Miami Dolphins, the, uh, the San Francisco 49ers, the L.A. Rams. They love the way that they structure their running game. They think Mike McDaniel's doing one of the best jobs of any coach in the NFL right now as far as the way that they utilize the RPO game with Tua Tunga Bailoa down there in Miami. And they are constantly trying to come up with ideas. And it's interesting because the NFL teams, who do you think they watch? Lane they Kiffin. watch colleges. 
So it's really neat to hear them talk about where some of their ideas come from. Short kick to Thomas. He does a good job fielding it, runs over his own player, gets it to the 35-yard line. So for the second consecutive kick return for Mississippi State, they're setting their offense up with a good spot on the field. I think now the game kind of settles in a little bit. You've seen a little bit of what the attack is going to be. You see that Mississippi State has run the ball effectively. The slot players have done a nice job catching the ball and attacking the middle part of the field. Ole Miss had a nice defensive stand last time, last series. They got to play with more physicality, and they got to be better offensively in the red zone. So now we're off and running. That's Johnson again. He gets the ball for the second possession. Troy Brown first to lead the way after a gain of three. Saw Marks on the first drive. He was able to score the touchdown, but we've seen Dylan Johnson two drives in a row. As you can see, look, this running game, again, you don't associate that typically with the air raid, but this team has been running the football very effectively. Quarterback Will Rogers controls a lot of that at the line of scrimmage, depending upon whether it's a light or heavy box. And they have been successful so far. Second and seven. Could check it down if he wants to. There comes the pressure again. Ball is out. Oh, miss. Had an opportunity to recover, perhaps a scoop and score. And how about Tulu Griffin? He somehow beat the entire Ole Miss defense and was able to fall on it for Mississippi State. Yeah, you see, there it is. Kyrie Coleman coming around the backside, the blind side of Will Rogers and knocking that ball out. What a pristine opportunity, though. Otis Reese had scoop and oh, he was thinking, right there. He was thinking, man, I'm about to dance in this end zone. I've got a turkey Ooh, wobbling hoo -hoo. on the field. Yeah. And Tulu saves the day. It was a loss of 22. It does bring up a third and 29. But it's a negative play. It puts Mississippi State in a bind here. I mean, what do you call on third and 20 plus? There's no play call for that. Ticking down the final 10 seconds here in the first quarter. Movements. And the first time tonight, we'll hear from our lead referee, All David start. Smith. 64 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. So Steven Lasoya moved early. You for sure don't have a ball play for third and 30. No, you don't. You're just trying to see if you can gain some yardage, gain some field position, and punt this ball out of there and flip the field. But I can tell you this, Mike Leach may not be thinking that way. No, he's going to say, you know what, let's let the clock go to zeros and put an end to this frenetic first quarter. You know, we've been moving a lot. There's only been 13 points scored, 7-6. It's been a great day of football. Thanksgiving around the country. This thing was fast. We're going to grab a glass of water. You grab a libation. We promise more football coming up next from Oxford. Second quarter on the way. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Welcome back. Battle for the Golden Egg. The trophy created back in 1927. Mississippi State up 7-6. Lewis Riddick, Matt Barry, Harry Lyles with you. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours as Mississippi State gets the ball at the 11-yard line. And Dylan Johnson there on third and 34. Even the great Mike Leach doesn't have a call for that. He picks up 11 just to create some space and Ole Miss forces a punt. This is where you now rely on your special teams, protect, punt, get some hang time so your guys can cover the punt and try to see if you can flip the field. Look, this game, I'll tell you what, man, I'm sitting here a couple times telling myself, hey, breathe, man, just breathe. <laughs> you're having flashbacks of your preseason when your first year in the NFL when you're playing against a no huddle down in Tampa Bay against Steve DeBerg and old Buccaneers. Steve DeBerg. Oh, that's a great name, isn't it? What a it? legend. That's a great name. That face mask went down to his neck. <laughs> Archer I Trafford. New punter to Jordan Watkins fields it. Good job by that Bulldogs special teams. 
punt of 38 and a gain of one. Oh, I, you know what the best part about Thanksgiving weekend is? We've got so much football for you. We're going to get it started. Only show in town tonight. Friday, we've got so much for you. Noon on ABC. Winner of Tulane, Cincinnati gets the American Conference Championship. Baylor in Texas. Noon on ESPN. you got Toledo in Western Michigan. NC State, North Carolina. If that's like anything it was a year ago, tune into that one. And then Florida and Florida State. Just get fat and sassy on college football. So you look at the rushing yards last week or last week versus Arkansas relative to this week for Lane Kiffin and the offense. See what Jackson Dart can do with it. Quick shot out to Mingo. Mingo makes the first man miss. And that's a good individual effort out of Jonathan Mingo at a gain of eight. Jonathan Mingo is a stud now. This is a guy who can do it all, can play all three wide receiver positions, run after the catch. Shot outside Malik Heath. Tackled by Richardson. Lewis, this is going to be good for you. It's going to force you to talk snackable tonight. <laughs> I mean, you, you better get something in quick. Hey, man, sometimes you don't have to say anything. Just let the fans enjoy what's happening on the field. There are some high-octane athletes out here tonight. Pressure. Dart has Mingo. Mingo dropped it. Jonathan Mingo wide open dart good recognition and a touchdown stays off the board yeah the middle of the field is where Mississippi State may be susceptible as far as the matchup with Mingo when you're talking about guys like Colin Duncan Jackie Matthews Jalen Green the safety's covering him they had a shot right there for a big time play maybe put six on the board and dismiss it so dart fakes it to Evans keeps it brought down by Jet Johnson and already we've seen a couple of early designed runs for Dart, whose running is productive, is how Lane Kiffin described it. Yeah, he's not a next level athlete, but he's a kid who really does embrace the physical aspect of the game. He ran the football for over a thousand yards in high school his senior year, so he can do it. And he has no issues with it. So just one of four on third downs tonight, third and nine. Evans tries to punch it up the middle. Davis brings him down. And every time Ole Miss has gotten something started, Mississippi State buckles down defensively, and this time they're going to force another field goal. This one's going to be from deep. Yeah, you see, that's a nice call on the part of defensive coordinator Zach Arnett. He stunned Jordan Davis right into that guard tackle gap area. Nice play call. All Jordan Davis had to do was wrap up and get him on the ground. Give Mississippi State's defense credit. Coming up with timely stops when they need them. 49-yard attempt for Cruz. How about Cruz? He's like, guys, don't worry. <laughs> I got you. I got you. So it's been three field goals out of Jonathan Cruz, perhaps a drive that could have been after Mingo drops what looks like was going to be at least a big play, but perhaps a touchdown. However, Rebels back on top, 9-7. We'd like to welcome those of you who perhaps just finished watching former Mississippi State Bulldog Dak Prescott, the Dallas Cowboys, get the win over the New York Giants. Welcome into the Egg Bowl. Lewis Riddick, Matt Berry alongside. I promise you, this will be very entertaining. Just stay with us. And right now, Ole Miss is on cruise control. <laughs> Up 9-7. Sometimes I can't help myself. I know you can. And, 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 you, know and, 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 and you know what? At least you waited to the second Thank quarter you. tonight. Thank it's you. We cool. talked about it's that. All, it's all good. Uh, it's in all a rivalry good. game, there's bound to be some interstate teammates. For more on that, down to Harry. Yeah, guys, Ole Miss wideout Jonathan Mingo and Mississippi State quarterback Will Rogers actually played high school football together for two years at Brandon High School here in Mississippi, where Rogers' dad was actually the offensive coordinator. The two were open to playing college football together, but Rogers wasn't offered by Ole Miss, the team he actually grew up rooting for. Despite them going their separate ways and playing their separate careers, the two remain very close. They still talk to each other every single day. Obviously, wish each other well luck before the games. Perhaps not before this one, though. Tonight they are combatants. Rogers family, well, they they grew up Ole Miss fans and since they've made the switch, Mark's back in the backfield. This drive starts at the 25. 
Rodgers looks left, throws left. Thomas on the completion. Gain of five, brought down by Sistrunk. Look, Mississippi State has had success throwing the football in the middle of the field. Now look, Ra-Ra Thomas typically operates on the outside, and the inside is reserved for Wally and Williams, number 85. But the middle of the field has been open for them. Let's see if they try to exploit the zone coverage of Ole Miss. Trips top of the screen. Mark slips out of the backfield. There you call it. Over the middle, Rufus Harvey. And that'll be a first down Mississippi State gain of six. Look, it's, it's not preferred by offensive coordinators to go the long, hard way as far as short passes and having to have eight, ten play drives. They much prefer explosive plays. But when you have a quarterback as accurate as Will Rogers, you'll take it. And that's Marks on the ground, and he can do that as well. And you bring up the Mississippi State passing offense. Said it at the beginning of the show, 74% of the time they pass, but they're only averaging 5.2 yard air yards per attempt. That's fewest at FBS. And they're just all about efficiency, right? They're all about throwing the football where the defenders aren't, exploiting open areas against zone, taking shots against man. It's really not that difficult. They always feel as though they have an answer for whatever you're trying to do. Second and seven, Marks again off the right side. J.J. Pegues brings him down, gain a one. What a great play by the former tight end, Auburn transfer, who has moved to the defensive line, has fantastic athletic ability as far as his pass rush potential. He's just scratching the surface of what he can do. You can see him here on the left side of the screen. Just watch this athleticism here. Get into the guard, get your hands on him, get off the block and make the play. J.J. Pegues has a fantastic career ahead of him. He's one of those defensive guys now, but he still thinks he can play with the ball in his hands. Oh, he was running the Wildcat as a tight end at Auburn. <laughs> Begs for offensive touches. Big third and six. Rodgers forced out of the pocket. He's just going to have to throw it away. Pressure from Tavius Robinson, and right now, Ole Miss's defense, aside from that first possession, Lewis, they have found a way to get to the Bulldogs' offense. A real nice job of pattern recognition down the field by the back seven, making sure that they're matching the patterns, closing off throwing windows, making it difficult for Will Rogers, and then the rush. You know, once again, you see Tavius Robinson factoring in on the play, trying to keep Will Rogers contained out there on the perimeter. This is great team defense. That's how you get off the field on third down, give it back to your offense. Third consecutive three and out. George Georgopoulos to punt. Watkins deep. And that's a great that's punt. That's a fantastic punt. That is just special teams perfection. A punt of 55 rolls out at the five yard line. Lane Kiffin, Ole Miss ball when we come back. Everyone, Deuce McAllister here, former running back for the Ole Miss Rebels, and just want to tell you, you know, how intense this game is. Obviously, for the players and the fans, it's one that um, is of great importance. I mean, you talk about it from the state of Mississippi, you know a lot of the uh, other players on that team, and so uh, it may not have the national pub as some of those other rivalry games, but it's one that you definitely, um, you definitely get fired up for. So, obviously, you know who I'm pulling for. Um, I hope for a clean, safe game for each side and, you know, uh, can't wait to see those Rebels get out there and play. And then I also have to give a shout out to Ben Williams. He's having his uh, jersey retired. Uh, ben, um, fantastic player at Ole Miss and for Ole Miss. And so, you know, shout out to Ben Williams, but I'm pulling for those Rebels tonight. One of the great running backs here in Ole Miss history, handing the ball off to another great running back in Quinshawn Judkins after a gain of two. I mean, when you bring up <laughs> Judkins and some of the Ole Miss running backs here, that Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis, Dexter McC like some of these guys have been really, really good, and that's really, really good defense, incomplete. That's Forbes, who has the most pick sixes in FBS and SEC history, making the play, bringing up a third and eight. What did Lane Kiffin tell us yesterday? He said, you know what, I'm going to stay away from Forbes a little bit. I understand where we should go and where we shouldn't go. We shouldn't try Emmanuel Forbes too often, and that's the reason why. This guy is on it now. There's nothing he can't do. Blitz comes on. Dart does a good job getting out of the pocket. And another drop. That one by Heath. So second time we've seen the quarterback make the play. Mingo a drop earlier. Heath a drop there. And Ole Miss going to have to punt. That's a fantastic job of Jackson Dart avoiding 
the rush, buying some time, getting outside against zero blitz, meaning no safety in the middle of the field, man-to-man -man coverage across the board. And Malik Heath just simply drops it. There's nothing more that Lane Kiffin or Jackson Dart can do in that case. The receivers just have to make the plays. So punting from his own end zone. Xavier Thomas situated at the 50, makes the initial man miss. Xavier Thomas, the special teams again for Mississippi State plus territory. However, flag on the play. We'll check that is what that is after a punt of 45 and a return of 12. I'm telling you, for a true freshman, this guy just makes you hold your breath every time he touches the field and every time he touches the ball as a punt returner. If he makes that first guy miss, just hold on, man, because the, he can go, and he can go in a hurry and really turn this game upside down. Dynamic open field runner. After gaining possession, illegal block in the back, number 10 on the receiving team. 10-yard foul from the spot of the foul. First down. Was like Corey Ellington negating the good starting field position for Mississippi State. As for this Ole Miss defense, I had said it a second ago, they forced three consecutive three and outs, Harry, to complete departure from what we saw last week against Arkansas. Yeah, Matt, and you know when we spoke with defensive coordinator Chris Partridge, he told us he was not going to allow any smiles this week leading up to this game. I can tell you there were a lot of smiles on this defensive line when they were sitting here on the bench. Defensive line coach Randall Joyner said, hey, if you guys keep this up, we're gonna be in pretty good shape tonight. Yeah, if we had, and we have ESPN Plus, which by the way, subscribe to ESPN Plus today. If we had ESPN Platinum, we could tell you exactly how Partridge. <laughs> I was, was going to say, the choice of words was very yeah. colorful, but it was fun. Like, he was fired And up. it appears to be effective, at least for now. Like, he did not like how they got bullied and pushed around down in Fayetteville. Simple as that. They came off their best performance of the season against Alabama, held them to... 317 yards, Bryce Young just 209. And then after the loss, Arkansas tallied 503 yards and just get pushed around. We'll let David Smith clean this up here. Correction on the spot of the ball. It should be on the 45 yard line, not the 35 yard line. Am I allowed to give the official a dollar? <laughs> you know what, I am, dollar. Getting back to what Chris Partridge said, though, look, how many times did he use the word unacceptable? He says, just unacceptable. Everything's just unacceptable. Physicality, unacceptable. Assignment errors, unacceptable. So far tonight. So now Lane is trying to figure out what's going on. Spot is still potentially incorrect. Statistician of the Stars, Eric Merrillis, up here with me in the booth. That the flag was thrown on the 50. Now, Smith going to go talk to Lane. We have Matt Austin tonight, our rules official. Let's bring in Matt Austin for a moment. Matt, what might the confusion here be with Lane Kiffin and David Smith? Well, I, I, I'm not sure where the spot of the foul was. Uh, that wasn't part of the announcement, and I never saw the flag on the field, but I'm sure that's what the confusion is. And when they moved it up, it made Coach Kiffin upset. So I understand him questioning it. Right, that'll just about take care of the flybys. Ball at the 45, marks in the backfield, got it figured out. Early movement from Ole Miss. That's going to be five yards Offside on the defense. The nose guard over the center. Five more penalty. First down. That's right, so Katie Hill.
And you see KD. Clear, yep. You see KD Hill. You may, you may have heard the hand clap of Will Rogers and trying to jump the snap count, but when you're the nose guard, look to see. You have to just look at the football. No self-inflicted penalties like that. Rogers looks over the middle, checks down, looking for marks. Good job by the defensive line. KD Hill, who just had the penalty, swats that thing down. Bring it up second and five. Yeah, it's an impossible completion to make when you're trying to throw the football just over the head of the center and KD Hills is standing there waiting for you to throw it. Now you're in second and five. Austin Williams in motion. Rodgers looks left, comes back right, incomplete intended for Wally. Troy Brown, nice coverage, bring it up a third down. Yeah, this is the real nice job of the inside linebackers. Troy, ba Troy Brown and Kyrie Coleman just passing off. He's underneath crossers, playing with good vision, then breaking on the football. That's textbook right there by Troy Brown. Textbook fundamental underneath zone coverage. Play with good vision, perif the field, see the quarterback. This whole Miss defense right now is rolling. They're settling into a nice little groove here as far as defending the passing game in Mississippi State. Mississippi State 0 for 3 on their last third downs. And that again batted down by Pagis. JJ Pagis giving them the Dikembe Natumbo. No, no, no. Hey, this is, a, this is a fun player to watch. All the upside in the world. You see him rushing from the zero technique from the nose. And you see him right there. They just threw a flag down, giving the sideline warning to Ole Miss. Chuck the flag, told him to get back. Against the Ole Miss sideline. That is their first warning of the game. Sure, Lane will love that. I fear that I did something, Lewis, and I got to come clean with you. What's that? I think I jinxed the offenses. <laughs> Like early too. That's right. Hey, you know what? They're not. They're not really worried about you, me, anybody up here in the booth. The announcer jinx is real, though. But, yeah. You know what? I think there. There may be. There's data to prove it. There's some circumstantial evidence about that. So two deep returners, Watkins, Mingo, back there to get Georgeopolis, who's had a nice night. That's going to be Watkins' fair catch it at the 13-yard line. So a punt of 37. We're going to erase the announcers use you on the offense. 9-7 Ole Miss here in the second. Sunday NFL Countdown crew has you covered. Week 12, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. And the Monday Night Countdown crew gets you set for Steelers, Colts, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, both on ESPN and the ESPN app. Ball spotted at the 12 for Jackson Dart and Ole Miss. Zach Evans back in the game. Dart to throw. Again, climbs the pocket, points out his block and gets it. And a nice gain on first down, gain of six, chased out of bounds by Tyrus Wheat. See, that's the versatility of Jackson Dart. He doesn't see anything he likes down the field, get positive yardage, create a second and short type of situation now for yourself that you can manage much better. And they just cannot get the running game going. That's Wheat again on Evans in a loss of three. I mean, it's all about Jaden Crumity right there at the point of attack. Along with Tyrus Wheat of just playing stout defense. Resetting the line of scrimmage, not letting these fantastic backs get started. So third and six, bunch formation, top of the screen. Here comes the blitz. Dart gets it off. It's going to be close, caught by Watkins. And they're going to mark him inches short. Pressure there getting him, Jet Johnson. And Lane's keeping the offense on the field. He's going to use a timeout. Timeout. Ole Miss. They're first. Even Please by Lane Kiffin standards, this is aggressive. We'll seconds. see what he does. Seven, you see Jackson three, Dart kind of shaking his hand off a little bit. Took a hit. Fourth and one. Nothing really going offensively for either team. We'll see what Kiffin decides when we come back.
So Lane Kiffin will elect to punt it. No surprise. 9-7 Ole Miss up here midway through the second. Have a look at this hit with Jackson Dart shaking his hand after he got hit. Yeah, you can see right here. There's some kind of contact made with the thumb, with that throwing hand. We'll have to just keep an eye on it as this game goes along. It was Jet Johnson that got in there, hit the, his thumb right as he came in on the pressure. Seems to be fine over there on the bench. Another punt from Mason to Xavier Thomas. Fair catches it at his 41-yard line after a punt of 40. Tell you what, outside of the first drive for Mississippi State, this Ole Miss defense really has tightened up and really shut off the running lanes, defended the short and intermediate passing game very well with their zone coverage schemes. And that first possession stayed at 61 yards, and they've had negative three since. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's been a nice performance so far by Ole Miss on the defensive side of the football. Just had an opportunity maybe for a scoop and score for six off of a sack fumble. Rodgers, you talked about the middle of the field being open. It is there again in a first down Mississippi State. Justin Robinson, first time we've called his name tonight, gain of 11. Nice job of finding the zone void. Curling up in that curl flat area, about 10 to 12 yards down the field. Will Rogers throwing a strike. Back at Ole Miss territory. Rogers pump fakes left. Miss fires over the middle. Intended for Robinson. And wouldn't you know it, round three of Leach and Kiffin. And it's been all defense here in the first half, aside from the first couple of possessions. Front and coverage again, working well for Ole Miss so far. The back end, matching the patterns down the field in zone with good precision, giving the front some time to work its pass rush. And you've seen Tavius Robinson, 95, J.J. Pegues, JJ Pegues, 89, getting good push up front. Double sets of receivers, top and bottom of the screen. Rodgers forced out of the pocket. He's picked off. That's coming back. Oh, he's picked up, but they had a holding penalty as well. Nice pass rush by Cedric Johnson, but as you see there, that'll be declined. It's going to be Ole Miss ball, and a turnover and mistake from Rodgers. Yeah, you see here the pass rush again. They're getting good push up front. Cedric Johnson with the pressure, and then Otis Reese. Look, he figures, look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to miss an opportunity again here for a turnover. Again, you see the zone coverage. You see them playing with great discipline, great eyes. Otis Reese goes up high for the pick six, catches the ball cleanly in his hands. That's the kind of turnover that this Ole Miss defense needed. You'd mentioned the opportunity for Reese, the scoop and score potential early. Tulu hopped on it and saved the score, but now Reese gets his interception. We'll see if Ole Miss can take advantage. Quick chain, ball at the 36. Watkins motions out of the backfield. Here comes the pressure. Dart again forced out. Watkins the reception. And Dart continues to do a good job with this Mississippi State pass rush brought down there by Matthews, gain of four. Look, Zach Arnett is bringing the heat, man. He is not going to let Jackson Dart feel comfortable in the pocket. And Dart is doing all he can do using his athletic ability to kind of retreat in the pocket fade outside the pocket buy some time and get the ball off there goes Judkins off the left side trying to get him going Pickering who brought the pressure a play ago brings him down after a gain of two Judkins nine carries 28 yards here third down Dart out of the backfield. Judkins has it, gets a key block, tries to make a man miss, and an athletic job by Judkins to stay on his feet, brought out by Forbes. He's got an SEC high 59 missed tackles this year. Does Judkins that another opportunity to show it? Really, it's John Mingo. It's a downfield blocking of the wide receivers that makes that play. Dart, smart to climb the pocket, dives forward. 
gain of nine. Jet Johnson and Watson there. But again, Dart's feet have been big in the first half. And no question about it. Again, a guy who ran for over 1,000 yards in high school. He has athletic ability. He can pick up first downs with his feet. As you see, a key player, Nathaniel Watson, the linebacker for Mississippi State down on the field. He's led Mississippi State in tackles in seven games. He's second in the SEC right now with 98 total tackles. This guy is a playmaker for Zach Arnett's defense. You know, when we talked with, with Dart, he said, look, I want to come play in the SEC. He knew he wanted to come play in the SEC because he said he wanted to play with the best players in the country. And we said, well, what has Lane worked with you on? How have you gotten better under Lane Kiffin? He said his footwork and his ability to read the progression. And we've seen them both tonight, especially with the feet. Yeah, he's one of those guys who really wanted to take his game to the next level, wanted to be taught by the best, felt as though Lane Kiffin would give him that opportunity to be taught by the best against the best competition. And look, this is a guy who also, because of his baseball background, two-time All-State baseball player in high school, he can throw this football from many different arm angles off platform. It doesn't have to be all right for him, which makes him a very exciting young prospect. Let's check in in studio with Kevin Connors. Matt, happy Thanksgiving to you and to Lewis and our entire ESPN team and to you at home as well. Coming up on the Twisted Tea Halftime Report, we'll get you set for Rivalry Weekend. Can J.J. McCarthy hang with Ohio State if it turns into a high-scoring game? And what does the USC front seven have to do after getting gashed by UCLA a week ago this weekend against Notre Dame? We'll pose those questions to Sam Acho when you join us at the half. Casey, thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to all of my studio family back in Bristol as Judkins gains a five and he picks up the first down. Duncan and Green there to bring him down. Yeah, you're going to see these Mississippi State safeties. Colin Duncan, number 19, Jalen Green, Jackie Matthews. You're going to hear their names a lot. They are tackling machines on that second level. Double fake by Dart out of the backfield. It's Mingo, and he makes a couple of men miss. Mingo stays on his feet, and Mingo gets a first down for Ole Miss. Jet Johnson missed that tackle because of it and the effort, a gain of 13. Well, Jonathan Mingo is 6'2", 225 pounds, and he is all business. Here on this little boot action, you see him slam, release, block down inside, and then come back outside in the flat. And you see him right there. He says, Jet Johnson, get out of here. I'm just gonna, I got some, I got a first down to pick up. Dart looks downfield after the play fake, gets something out of nothing. Brought down by Deshaun Page, gain of three. Getting down in here in that high red zone area, fringe red zone area, I guess I should say, at about the plus 23. This is where this offense needs to pick up its efficiency and start scoring touchdowns instead of selling for field goals. Dart. Looks at Dayton Wade. Crowd wanted a flag. Charlton provided the pressure, and they're getting the dart. He's having to make his read quick, and if it's not there, he's got to buy more time. Yeah, look, the, the front seven for Mississippi State is really getting after it. It's one of the more improved areas on this defense. Mike Leach pointed it out to us. And they're doing a nice job of making things uncomfortable for Jackson Dart in the pocket. So another third down here, deep in Mississippi State territory. They've got Mingo situated in the backfield with Judkins. Judkins off the right side. There goes Judkins and a first down Rebels. Micah Pettis sprung the true freshman in a gain of 17. He sure did. And Micah Pettis, 6'7", 350 pounds. You're going to see him there on the combo block out on the perimeter. Here goes Judkins trying to get in. And Mississippi State stands him up. Jalen Green's like, you know what, Frost? Let's go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. <laughs> they don't even give you time to think about the play that just happened. Try and give him some credit. Micah Pettis, the right tackle, who's just a mountain of a young man with a nice block on the perimeter. Lane's like, hey, man, I got plays to call. 
calls one there to Judkins. You see the history he continues to make as Jet Johnson brings him down. Now third all-time for freshman SEC rushers. In that list, not bad. Herschel Walker, Nick Chubb, just past Johnny Manziel. Yeah, those are some pretty good players, aren't they? It's amazing what this young man has accomplished so early in his career. And like I said, from day one, from the time he put on pads, the players and the coaches recognized that he's different now. I don't care what his star rating was coming out of high school. He's all the stars here at Ole Miss. Can Ole Miss finally finish a drive with the touchdown? Third down, dart, quick throw, cross the middle, and again stopped short. Watkins brought down by Richardson, and I'd be stunned if Lane doesn't keep the offense on the field. That's a straight man-to-man -man coverage. The secondary doing a nice job of sorting that route out. And they're going to bring in the jumbo package. Our guy Pagese is coming in. They're bringing in the heavies. KD Hill's coming in. Well, look, they're 0 for 2 so far in the red zone. This is something that plagued them at Arkansas. It's something that Lane has been audibly disappointed about. And he wants to get this ball in here for six now. Fourth and goal. Judkins in the backfield. Timeout. Ole Miss. They're second. This will be a 30-second timeout. So Lane will continue to draw this ball play, but when you bring some, some units like Pagis out there, they're going big. Look, this would be the perfect opportunity here to run some sort of play action when you now have J.J. Pagis, considering what his background is as a four-star recruit as a tight end. He was on the edge of the formation there at tight end. You see they had KD Hill in the backfield to bring big people in. Everybody loads up and says, hey, they're just going to try and slam this up in here. Hard play action. Slip Pagese out here in the flat. Don't you dare tease the people with a thick six on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Don't you dare. You did not say thick six, Don't you, you dare <laughs> speak of the naughty on Thanksgiving. If Pagese gets in here. Hey, he's a former tight end. He's a former four-star recruit as a tight end. He has got some skills now. It, it just would make sense to get them thinking run with all the big men in here. 13th play of the drive. But you got Judkins in the backfield, so. Play fake. There he is. Pagese. Thank you very much. Touchdown, Hottie Toddy. Thick six. <laughs> Go ahead, big man. Celebrate. Celebrate, big dog. That's for all you second helpers out there. <laughs> I said at the beginning of the game, Pagese is like, man, give me my chance. I can still play <laughs> offense. Lewis Riddick, he smelled it. Pagese finishes it. Hard play action. I mean, it just makes sense. You put all that beef in there. You got <laughs> Quinshawn Judkins, who people are saying, this guy is just a hammer. Just run hard play action and slip the big man out in the perimeter. He's like, yep. That's what I do. I'm in love with college football. <laughs> this is a great atmosphere, man. Great atmosphere. A lot of excitement around this football team. A lot of good players, four and five stars all over this roster here. <laughs> yeah, he looks like an ad. Look at him over there having fun on the sidelines. Transferred in from Auburn, an electric personality. 13 plays, 60, 64 yards, 453 off the clock. But we got a ball game here. These teams are going back and forth. Both of these defenses playing some real stout football. Ole Miss's defense answering the bell after that dismal performance against Arkansas. Yeah, you just go ahead and strap in here. Go ahead and get yourself something to eat. Settle down. Don't eat too much. You want to stay awake for this entire one. Yeah, Ole Miss finally breaks the touchdown seal. Three timeouts, minute 55 left for Mississippi State. Sidelines got the smoke machine going. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Lane loves it, man. Lane loves it. I think he was the one who suggested that they needed a smoke machine on the sideline. Yeah, guys, how can we make this absolutely chaotic? Oh, simple, bring in a fire extinguisher. 
Like, these are just kids, man. We call them young men, but they're kids. And you just love to see them enjoying themselves. So Will Rogers, an opportunity here. They moved it right down the field on their opening possession. Three timeouts to move. That's Lane Kiffin's kid with the fire extinguisher. <laughs> How cool is that? Shouldn't does Lane even know he's in the like on the sidelines? He probably told him, get up there. Get up there and get that fire extinguisher. No, no Dad. <laughs> I got this. What did you do on Thanksgiving? Eh. I ran the fire extinguisher for my dad on the sideline of the Egg Bowl. So Rogers coming off the interception. Ball spotted at the 25. Plenty of time. Out of the backfield. That was dangerous, but Dylan Johnson comes up with it. Miles Battle was staring at a pick six, but a gain of seven. But Miles Battle, the former wide receiver, converted to corner about a year and a half ago, sitting in that short zone. You got to make that. That's got to be going the other way. Mississippi State lucky. Officially spotted him at six. So second and four, Rodgers, plenty of room to run. He's going to dive forward and get the first down. A gain of eight and a nice job by Rodgers to sense that he had room to run. Absolutely. That's his great recognition. I'm going to pick up this first down. I'm going to keep the chains moving here. Still three timeouts. Plenty of time. Ball to 39. Wally in motion. Rodgers across the middle of the field. That's Wally with the catch. Makes a man miss and another nice gain for the Bulldogs. You can see what Chris Partridge, the defensive coordinator of Ole Miss, is trying to do. Mississippi State, they're first. Trying to play everything top down. I'm trying to just rally and tackle. The only problem Please is sometimes you can... Please the game clock to one minute, 19 seconds. One, one, nine. Sometimes you give up too many chunk Thank plays. You. Next thing you know, they're down in scoring position in a hurry. You got to mix it up as far as your combination of when to be aggressive, when to play too much soft zone coverage. I've talked about it at length. Can't believe this is already the end of the regular season. Next Sunday, the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups in the Fiesta and Peach Bowls to be played New Year's Eve on ESPN. Reese and the guys will also unveil the New Year's Six Bowl games and have the final top 25 rankings, four-hour special. All starts noon Eastern. 9 Pacific. Time now for our top 10 rankings brought to you by Capital One. No drama this last week in terms of the top four. Tennessee loses to South Carolina. They fall to 10. Big one for USC this weekend against Notre Dame. Second and two now for the Bulldogs. Rodgers, quick shovel pass over the middle to Johnson. Effective enough to get the first down, move into Ole Miss territory. Troy Brown brings him down. You can see what Mike Leach's philosophy is here. Look, they're going to they're gonna drop and play this soft second and third level zone type of coverage. Let's get the ball in our playmaker's hands quickly and run and pick up yardage. And let's just operate at a fast tempo. We have timeouts. We have time on our side. Let's get ourselves in scoring position. And they're going to keep running the ball with Johnson. Thought about going up middle, wanted to bounce it outside. Ty Sheem Johnson said no. Nope. Mississippi State, their second. That forces Leach to use his second timeout. I could see Mike Leach from the booth here. He did not look happy over there when he gave the timeout signal. But they're moving the ball effectively with the short passing game. And here now you have to burn a timeout. You don't gain any positive yardage. And you know how much he loves to throw the football. A little puzzled on that play call. You makes you wonder if Will Rogers checked yeah, out of it into did. a run. Maybe he did. That didn't seem very Mike Leach with the time left in the half and what they need to do to score to bang one up the middle for no game. They have been getting some nice chunk plays here, some nice positive yardage in the underneath passing game. And as we've mentioned with the timeouts that they had on their side, it was a strategy that was moving down the field for them pretty productively. So just now the one timeout. Ball at the 48. 
clean pocket for Rodgers. Wide open receiver, Caleb ducking down the sideline. And that's a good chunk for the Bulldogs. Gain of 15. What a great play call as far as clearing out here. The backside zone coverage, bringing ducking all the way across the field on the shallow. The zone coverage defenders here play side where the ball was caught. Lose vision on ducking coming from the opposite side of the field. And then he has room to run. Nice play design on the part of Mike Leach. Fake the pop pass. Johnson there. And they're going to have to hurry up. He didn't want to use that final timeout. Now, in fact, he will. They're third. And Let's look at the play call the here. With, you see Caleb Duck, he ducking at the top of the screen. And watch him come on the shallow all the way across field. You see the deep routes just running the zone coverage defenders off. And you see the flat defender in corner to the play side down here at the bottom of your screen. Lose vision on what is happening and what is coming from the opposite side of the field. And when you don't play with vision and they run you off, that's what can happen. So now with Rodgers dumping it down to Johnson, Leach had to use his final timeout. So now play calling is going to be important with 36 seconds left, no timeout, second and five. Yep. Clock stops on the first down to the ball spotted. You can get out of bounds, but now you have to play mistake-free football, especially not taking a sack if you're Rodgers. Absolutely. Smart decision-making here on the part of Will Rodgers is important. Working the sidelines, working the boundaries. Rain has been in the forecast, starting to come down here in Oxford. Rodgers forced out of the pocket. Johnson finds him out of the backfield. He runs out of bounds, chased out by Tysheen Johnson. And that's going to bring up a third and short. And that's a nice job of pass rush by Cedric Johnson, the leading sacker for Ole Miss coming off the blind side of Will Rogers. Both of these defensive lines have done a nice job of making things uncomfortable for both quarterbacks in this game. Ra Ra Thomas, quiet tonight. Top of the screen, third and three. Rogers checks it down again. Johnson again. He breaks away from a tackle. That's big because the clock will stop now. Mississippi State's going to have to hurry up and a gain of six. And yeah, you see the coaching staff telling them, get up on the football. So Spike. Rogers will clock it. That's just a nice job. Of fighting for extra yardage by Dylan Johnson and making sure they can get the first down. You see him here, this sneak through the center of the line, and you see him not going down on contact. A chance there for Otis Reese maybe to stop him short and rub the first down. But these Mississippi State running backs, look, both Dylan Johnson and Jaquavius Marks, I mean, these guys are good catching the ball out of the backfield, have been very productive this year. And we've seen already how tough these guys are on contact. They do not go down easy. First and second in the SEC in terms of running back receptions out of the backfield. Rodgers just wisely throws it away. Cannot take a sack. 15 seconds, now 14 seconds left in the first half. So they've got an opportunity here, Lewis, to get a first down. You don't want to mess around too much at the time because you at least want to come away here with points. Absolutely. Look, as you said, you don't want to take any sacks. You don't want anything that will keep the clock running. you got to be smart with your decision-making throwing the football here. Will Rogers have been in these situations before. Mike Leach trusts him implicitly to make the right decision here to make sure they get some points out of this drive. Said his demeanor among the best of any quarterbacks he's coached in his career. Third and ten. Rogers over the middle. Wide open. Touchdown, Mississippi State. To Lou Griffin. And a big score before the half for the Bulldogs. And characterize that as a pretty good decision, Will Rogers. Mike Leach constantly putting pressure on your defense. You play zone coverage. The quarterback is just charged with making sure that he can just find the open wide receiver. By time to find the open wide receiver. You see they are playing almost like a little bit of a quarters concept, cover three concept there. 
And you see, they send somebody short, I mean, deep into the end zone. Tulu just spots up over about two or three yards short of the goal line and does the rest with his feet. 12 plays, 75 yards, minute 47 off the clock, used all three timeouts. That was as effective as it gets from Rodgers. Eight of nine, 67 yards, and a touchdown on the drive. Yeah, it's just a nice job of running the route combination with Calvin drawing two defenders into the end zone. Tulu just spotting up just short of the end zone. And then giving him enough pass protection for Will Rogers and then just find the open wide receiver. And you know what? We, look, we talked to Steve Spurrier Jr. before the game started, and they believe here that the quarterback, when you're working against zone coverage, just buy enough time for these wide receivers to find the open zone holes and get open. And that right there is a nice job of Will Rogers doing just that. Good vision down the field. Tulu finding the open zone void. And now we got a two-point ball game. Rodgers in that offense, again, coming in tonight, just needed 173 yards to become the eighth all-time leading passer in SEC history. He's at 136. More importantly, has closed the gap. Squid kit here now with eight seconds left. Ole Miss, the one timeout. And even for Lane Kiffin, I'd imagine, He'll take a knee here. Jonathan Hess there coming up at the half. You can watch the live performance of the Pride of the South on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. So they're going to line up for a ball play here, Lewis. See, maybe they can get, get a chunk here on first down with the one timeout left. You see the rain has started to fall here. There's the give to Zach Evans, so that'll do it for the first half. Really, Lewis, what we saw, both offenses came out, frenetic pace, kind of a chess match early on, but they've made adjustments late second quarter to each get a touchdown here at the half for Ole Miss to lead 16-14. Yeah, they sure did. The defenses responded well. Both offensive coaching staffs responded to what the defenses responded to, and both had some real nice drives here to finish with touchdowns. Before the end of here of the first half, I think now we're setting ourselves up for a real, real nice finish here in a second. These rivalry games tend to work themselves out dramatically. Let's go down now to Harry, who's with Lane Kiffin. Coach, the last fourth, fourth, I'm sorry, fourth and goal play to J.J. Pegues, thick six. He's from Oxford. How, how excited were you guys to get him that play call? Well, I mean, we needed to score there. We've really struggled in the red zone with all the field goals. And, you know, we played really good. We played really bad defense the first drive and the last drive right there and really good in between. So, you know, we've got to do a good job of keeping the ball in front of us and we've got to do a better job in the red zone. You mentioned those three red zone trips. What's going to be the message in the locker room to make sure you guys convert those in the second half? We just got to finish drives. We had a drop when we were going into score. And so, you know, we just got to execute better in those situations. Good luck in the second half. All right, thanks. Harry Lane, thank you. He had mentioned Pagis. You know what? On Thanksgiving, let the big guy eat. And he did. But right <laughs> now, we have just a two-point game. It's a good one in Oxford. Time now for the Twisted T Halftime Report with Kevin Connors and Sam Achi. SEC on ESPN. We've got a good one tonight. The Egg Bowl, 16-14 Ole Miss leads start of the third quarter. Had a bit of a stalemate with the defenses early on, but the offenses picked up Lewis late second half as we take a look at tonight's game flow brought to you by Progressive. Yeah, they got the big man involved for Ole Miss. Former four-star tight end recruit J.J. Pegues on the little flat route there for the touchdown in the second quarter. And then my man, Tulu Griffin, with a nice catch in the end zone just before the half on a really good throw by Will Rogers executing basically that two-minute offense to get Mississippi State down the field quickly. Some real timely completions. We got a two-point ball game. 
big because Mississippi State able to score at the end of the half and they now receive the opening kick. So it could be a two for one scenario taking advantage of that situation as Will Rogers and that offense comes back out. Yeah, and if, if you're Mississippi State now, you really continue to really try and work the middle of the field against this Ole Miss zone coverage. Find the zone voids, let your receivers catch and run, utilize the backs when necessary. And then if you can get them in some kind of single safety coverage and you have man-to-man -man on the outside, take the shot down the field. I said before the end of the half, the rain forecast had started to come down a little later than projected, but either way, it's here. So is Rufus Harvey from Rogers on first down and a gain of nine. And there it is, the little short, shallow crosser by Harvey. Just a quick throw and catch. Get the ball out of your hand quickly. Will Rogers took some hits in the first half. This old Miss defensive pass rush was really getting after him. That's a nice way to start. I got second and short. To Quavius Marks in the backfield. Quick toss to him and a nice tackle. That is 13, Ladarius Tennyson. Let's check in with Harry. Yeah, Matt, Mike Leach was pretty short on words coming out the locker room. He said, we just got to execute better and we got to start making plays in the second half. Seems like a pretty simple plan to me. Total yards, not much to speak of for Leach in the offense. Just 153 to this point in the game. How about Ladarius Tennyson? He leads this team in tackles for loss as a safety. That's how you do it, right there. Safety near and dear to Lewis's heart. The good safety play as Marks takes it off the left side, and he's got plenty for the first down. There goes Marks. And a big play from Mississippi State on third and short. How about Jaquavius Marks just showed Otis Reese, hey man, I got some Jets too. You're going to let me get out here on the perimeter? You're not going to keep the sideboards on this defense? Hey, I'm going to turn this corner and I'm going to scoot for an explosive run. 32-yard pickup for Jaquavius Woody Marks. Is he holding his hand? We'll get Harry to check with him out there. Simeon Price, first time he's been in the backfield tonight, he motions out. Rodgers, all day to throw. He's just going to tuck it and run. There's a flag on the play. Has plenty for the first down. Actually, they're going to spot him short, but we'll see what the penalty is here. I think you're going to get offensive holding. Holding, number 63 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. It's the Quinston Sharp. Let's take a look back at the run from Jaquavius Marks. Left the field injured after 32 yards. I don't know. Maybe a cramp, maybe winded. Yeah. Not our job to yeah. speculate, but didn't see anything from the contact perspective. You see him grabbing down at his leg. Yeah, it looked like his right leg, upper thigh area. So it first, his hand. first and 20 after the penalty. That's Johnson back in the backfield. And a quick shovel pass to Johnson. Find space on the left side. That is good recognition out of the running back and a good game there on first down. Hey, I see him young forces him out after a gain of 17. Look, Ole Miss playing a drop eight coverage, just rushing with three whenever everybody retreats. Look, you just had three defenders on the line of scrimmage, plus Otis Reese. And if you can just make Otis Reese miss, I mean, you've got green grass to exploit here. I mean, that's a nice play call. You see why they're doing that. They're protecting the second and third level of the defense. Don't want the ball thrown over their head. Just get the ball into your hand, in the hands of your running backs in a different way instead of handing it off which is exactly what Mike Leach is doing by that little pass right there. So they pick up 18 after the holding penalty that made it first and 20. And there was movement. False start, 76 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Now, but Reese gives five back. You got second and short. That's the kind of thing I'm just telling you, drives, coaches, bananas. Second and short, whole playbook's open. Exactly. I mean, it's just, it seems like right now maybe insignificant because you still have, look, this offense has been moving the football here pretty effectively, but that's just the kind of thing I'm telling you has coaches just pulling their hair out. So instead of second and two, now second and seven. Movement again, not called. Rodgers, incomplete. 
I think the players expected the play to be stopped. Yeah, everyone was kind of just standing around. Rodgers kept the play alive. Cedric Johnson got the pressure. Looks certainly as if someone moved. Well, you can see at the top of your screen, Rufus Harvey starts to move. You know, he's coming in motion. Right tackle. Seems like he leaves and gets into his pass set a little bit early, too. Albert Reese. I feel like you could have had two infractions on that play. So instead of two, there's none. Third and seven. Opening drive for Mississippi State here in the third quarter. Incomplete. Tried to hit Johnson over the middle. Troy Brown was right on him. In a little bit of no man's land here with the ball at the 32. It's between the 31 to 32, and Leach is going to keep the offense out there. Tried to hit Dylan Johnson on a little halfback angle route out of the backfield one on one against Troy Brown. This is big here for the Ole Miss defense to get off this field. Play clock down to three, and Will Rogers is going to have to use the first timeout Mississippi State. for Mississippi first. State. So the Bulldogs trying to make a run and a play here early third quarter. We'll see if Leach sticks with it when we come back. A look at the Taco Bell Live Moss student section. Student sections across the country are competing to be the Live Moss student section of the year all season long. How do we get those shots, you may ask? Greenberg. <laughs> One word. Greenberg. A producer unlike any other with us on the road. The student section's going to need to be loud here. Fourth and seven. Rogers. Flushed from the pocket. Not going to be able to get there with his feet. Forced out by Seastrunk. And Ole Miss's defense. And the Bulldogs looked as if they were threatening for points. Able to turn the ball over on downs. When you're working against zone coverage in the air raid, if you listen to coaches, they will tell you if it's not open originally, it's up to the quarterback to buy some time and the receivers to uncover and find the zone voids. And they just couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. You see here, they really take away the curl route at the top of the screen. They take away the little halfback angle. Will Rogers tries to scramble, get out of the pocket. They come up and try and force him to make a decision. Nice team defense on the part of Ole Miss. So storyline to watch here for the Rebels in the second half, the running game with Quinshot Judkins, 51 yards. Zach Evans, only four yards. And Dart brought down on first down, flag on the play. That was Tyrus Wheat. I tell you, Jackson Dart was trying to go up top and take a shot. Number 57 on the offense. That penalty is declined. Second down. So they're going to take the loss of seven, decline the holding on Micah Pettis. He wanted to take a shot on the outside. The Malik Heath was running a nine route, a go route on the outside. But Tyrus Wheat with the nice high side speed rush. You see him coming off the edge here. Dip that inside shoulder around big man Micah Pettis. First sack of the game for Mississippi State. Ole Miss trying to get some of that yardage back. Watkins forced down by Watson. And that was really the first time, like, we, we've talked about this rivalry and and how these two fan bases and these two teams just don't like each other. You see Heath down on the field. That was really the first time we've seen any after whistle extracurriculars. Been pretty clean to this point. Looks like they're stretching Heath down on the field. Look, okay, and that's good to see, right? It's been a physical football game, a hard hitting football game. There's been some nice battles in the trenches with the big men for sure on both sides of the ball. So they're going to continue to stretch out Heath. We'll step aside and a third down and 12 for Ole Miss when we come back. Wonderful time. Yes, the most wonderful time of the year. 
Championship Saturday next Saturday. This is a look at a, our crew dinner last night here in Oxford. Want to thank everyone who was away from their families working hard this Thanksgiving holiday. And thank you for ESPN taking everybody out for a well-deserved Thanksgiving pre-dinner there on third and 11. It's going to fall incomplete intended for Mingo. I think this weather is going to start becoming a factor with the rain coming down here. Although that pass is a little bit behind Jonathan Mingo, the rain's coming down pretty good. You just wonder if ball handling and ball security and the ability to catch the ball cleanly is going to become a factor as you see Jackson Dart moving around that throwing shoulder, that right arm, after taking a hit there on that pass, that incompletion to Mingo. It had been forecasted throughout the day, it had been pushed later and later throughout the afternoon. Is Fraser Mason the punt? Xavier Thomas back to receive for Mississippi State. He's going to have an opportunity to make a man miss, and he does so, looking for a block outside. There goes Thomas, and the special teams man. from Mississippi State have been really, really good in setting them up with field position as Mason forced him out of bounds after a return of 25. Look, Xavier Mason is seventh in the FBS in, in punt return average, averaging just under 13 yards per return. And he has a 63-yard return for a touchdown already this year. I'm telling you, every time that he gets to that wall and gets to that edge, you sit there and you go, this guy could take it the distance. He is a big play touchdown waiting to happen, along with Tulu Griffin on kick returns. And that is a real, real weapon for them in a game right now. With this weather, yeah. that big plays could play a big part. You see the radar map there. It's supposed to get heavy right around 845 is where that band of yellow and red comes in there. We'll see how that affects play calling for Ole Miss they, or Mississippi State. They don't care about the rain. They're going to chuck it on first down. It's going to be incomplete. Austin Williams had to wait for it. Rodgers put it there. Davis and Igby Noson, the freshman, a player that they described as hitting that freshman wall a couple of weeks ago. They feel that Igby Noson is, is rested and ready, and he was there on the coverage. And he's another one of those four-star prospects from the great state of New Jersey who's come down here now, making a name for himself. That's a big play. It's a big hit out there. Put Mississippi State in second and long. Rodgers pump fakes, looks across the middle of the field, has Wally. And Wally's going to get a nice game there on second down, bringing up third and two after eight. You see all this drop eight coverage, rush with three, drop with eight coverage. Right now that Chris Partridge is using, you see what Mike Leach's answer is, throw it short and run. You can pick up a quick seven, eight yards every time. That's why you have to mix it up. You can't sit in it too long or too often. Snap, snap ready for Will Rogers. Wasn't ready for the snap, and K.D. Hill takes advantage. See, that's a nice job of bringing an extra rusher, rushing with five, playing a little bit more man coverage on the back end, put some pressure on Will Rogers and K.D. Hill. You see, with the good hand usage, Got some interior penetration as well. You see Jared Ivey coming around the left side, defensive left side. That's just a nice answer by this front seven of Ole Miss. Both of these teams, the front sevens, have played some good football tonight. It has not been easy for these quarterbacks. Sideline warning, Mississippi State. That is their first sideline warning of the game. Some miscommunication on the snap to Rodgers. Mike Leach not happy about it. Ole Miss defensive line was able to catch up to it. And now Georgeopolis on the punt. Watkins and Mingo standing at their 10. And that punt, again, the special teams for Mississippi State. You know, we saw K.D. Hill there on the big sack of Will Rogers for more on 38 down to Harry. Yeah, Matt, K.D. was named the winner of the Chucky Mullins Courage Award back in September. The award honors the late Chucky Mullins, who had his old Miss career come to an end during the 1989 homecoming game against Vanderbilt when he was paralyzed after making a tackle. After returning to Ole Miss to finish his education, Mullins passed away in 1991. The, they award the number 38 
jersey annually to an Ole Miss upperclassman, defensive player that embodies the spirit of Mullins, courage, leadership, perseverance, and determination. Hill was selected, and upon telling his mother of winning it, he was in tears. He was so happy. Certainly deserved empty backfield for Jackson Dart. They're going to try that slip screen, and Mingo hit by Green. Loss of two, and a Mississippi State player down on the field. That's Forbes, the all-time leader in pick sixes. And that play, Lewis, that was dangerous. Yeah, look, they, they sniffed that out quickly. Tyrus Wheat was in on the play quickly as well, stopped his pass rush, and was able to pursue the football quickly. They, this would be a big blow if Emmanuel Forbes suffered any kind of significant injury. Maybe he didn't, hopefully he didn't. This is one of the best defensive backs in the country, an absolute thief. Plays physical downhill. Looks like he got his arm caught in between Green and Tyrese Wheat, or Tyrus Wheat. So active FBS leader with 14 interception. Asias Furge is gonna be the player in for Forbes. They spotted it a loss of one, so now second and 11. Dart in his own end zone. Quick shot out to Heath. And a good job by Malik Heath. They went at Furge right away. First play, gain of nine. Well, you can best believe Lane Kiffin is going to try and exploit Asias Furge and see what he's got. You knew, you saw, he did not go after Emmanuel Forbes very often. And a good job by Mississippi State's defense on Zach Evans, who has not been able to get it going. That was Wheat, who's had a nice evening in a tackle for loss, loss of five, and it's gonna be punt time again for the Rebels. Look, Tyrus Wheat has been playing lights out. You see how strong he's playing right there at the point of attack against tackle Jaden Williams, and the way he has been rushing the passer as well. Like, he's like their joker. He's their guy who they can put his hand in the ground and they can play with a four-man line. You can stand him up in a 3-4. He can walk around, rush over a guard, rush over the center from a two-point stance. He can do it all, man. And he has shown up big tonight. So out of his own end zone, Mason able to get it off. There was contact, and there's a flag. Xavier Thomas to receive the punt. He takes it across the 50, tackled by Battle. But we'll see what this flag is, if it's running into or roughing. That, that to me looked like roughing. At first glance, uh, maybe not. J.P. Purvis. Let's see how the referees see this. Does a nice job of trying and to sell the contact. It's fourth and five. Running into the kicker on the defense, number 26. Yep. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, fourth down. So it's about fourth and five and a half which is going to matter because that half yard is going to negate them getting a first down. It looks like Lane is sending the punt team back out. Yeah, at this point, re-punt it. See if you can tack on some more of that penalty yardage on the re-kick. You're backed up. You're backed up in your own end zone. It's just critical that your ball handling, your punt oper operation, the snap, the handle by the punter, getting the ball off. This is all critical in these moments when you're backed up in the weather, the rain's coming down like this. So Mason gets it off cleanly to the freshman, Thomas, waving away his players, and that's gonna take a good bounce. So you see the penalty yardage tacked on there by virtue of a re-kick at the 39. They had had it past the 50-yard line. As we now take a quick word from Duluth, here's Marty Smith. A full-on chest bump with a mascot of the game. The durability and flexibility of Duluth Firehose Pants lets you celebrate any way you want. Back to you. I'll address that with Marty later. So you get these fans now that are here for the 119th meeting of the Egg Bowl will be doing so in wet conditions for the rest of the way. 
Ball at the 42. Marks in the backfield. Mississippi State down two. Looked across the middle. Pressure. Ball's out. Ole Miss recovers. Tavius Robinson got there, forced the fumble, and it was Cedric Johnson who came up with it. What a spectacular pass rush on the part of Tavius Robinson off the defensive left. The high side speed rush, you're going to see him here at the bottom of the screen. They played a drop eight coverage, they're only rushing with three. And watch Tavius Robinson, watch him turn this corner and flatten. And then not just go for the sack, but go for the strip sack. You're not supposed to be able to get home with just a three-man rush and you're dropping eight. That's not how it's supposed to work, but when it does work that way for a defense, that's a huge, huge win. And now for Ole Miss, set up on the plus 36 going in. Fourth sack of the night for that defense. Quick give to Judkins, see if that gets him going a little bit. Second turnover of the night from Mississippi State. Charlton brings down Judkins. Somehow Ole Miss has to get this running game going. They have to get Zach Evans and Judkins rolling to see if they can establish the line of scrimmage. The weather deteriorating and the rain. And there's an after play penalty. That's, I think what they're going to wind up doing is they're going to wind up getting 93 Cameron Young. I mean, well after the play was over, it's just not a smart play. And Malik Heath, the former Mississippi State Bulldog, is out there getting this crowd fired up. Unnecessary roughness, number 93 on the defense. 15-yard penalty. Correction. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Automatic By reading foul. lips, it is Cameron Young. That's it is a personal foul, and it is 15 yards. Look, the play's well over. There's just, there's just no point in doing it. There's just no point. This game is too tightly contested. And you can't give up any yardage here with Ole Miss starting to gain some momentum off of the strip sack. And they've done a good job when Ole Miss gets into the red zone and forces right. them to hit field goals. Yeah, just don't, yeah, they have. But you just don't want to give up any unnecessary yardage in a game that this, that's this tightly contested. Quick shot outside the dark. Good job by the Bulldogs. That's Mingo. And again, this is one of the fiercest rivalries in all of college football. We're now starting to see a little bit of chirping. Had the first personal foul penalty we've had all game as we approach the midway point of the third quarter. I'm telling you, Nathaniel Watson has been all over the football field tonight. I mean, he has been making plays against the run, the pass, he's been doing it all. There goes Judkins, full head of steam for the true freshman. And he's starting to get those legs going now, just short of the first down, brought down by Jalen Green. And here comes that Ole Miss tempo again with a third and short. They're gonna go ahead and give it to Judkins again. And that was Nathaniel. You talked about Watson hey. being the guy there. He is active. That's a loss of one, so it's going to bring up a fourth and short. Look, he's a tackling machine, man. He's second in the SEC coming into this game with just under 100 tackles. He's just all over the place. Big, active, athletic, 6'2", 240 pounds. And he exactly what the job requires. So here comes that jumbo package uh -oh. again where we saw Pegues get the touchdown. Heard round the Thanksgiving table. <laughs> Fourth and two. You Offense on Judkins in the backfield. You wouldn't do it again, would you, Lane? I think they handed it off this time. Mason Brooks, an extra blocker. Play fake from Dart. No, they get, he's still got the ball, does Dart. And he's going to throw it away, almost intercepted. The play fake to Judkins. I think it was an RPO. I think he could have handed it off. He could have gave it to him. Or he decided to pull it. So Wheat provided the pressure. Ugh. Green had his hands on it. And again, Ole Miss after the turnover, empty handed. Bulldogs step up when they need it. Still down two here in the third quarter. Rivalry weekend, Florida, Florida State on Friday. And then Saturday, USC, Notre Dame. Both are 730 Eastern on ESPN. So Mississippi State's defense helps out their offense and Will Rogers now at the five yard line. 
And that's going to be Marks right up the middle for no gain. A good job by Ole Miss, led by Pegues, who continues to have a big night. There you are, big man. I mean, it's just, it's textbook. Come off the line of scrimmage, shoot your hands, control the block, find the football, stay square, don't give any ground, then make the play. It's perfect. It's perfect by the former four-star tight end. It's perfect. It doesn't get any better than that. His upside is unlimited, man. He can do whatever he wants to do as far as being a good three technique that can play at the next level in the NFL. Play fake to Marks. Rodgers out of his own end zone. Can't find anybody. Checks it back to Marks, who's hanging out by the sideline, and he gets a good positive gain to create some space after seven. Otis Reese brings him down. Ole Miss continue, continuing to do a nice job at the second and third level, at the linebacker level and the secondary level, of playing zone coverage with good eyes, matching the patterns, and making Will Rogers have to buy time and try and find an open receiver as they uncover. So Marks went back off the field. Looks like he's, he's been nursing an injury here in the second half on a big third down, third and three. They're saying he's got to come out for a play. Not sure why. Third and three, you expect some kind of man coverage, maybe bringing an extra rusher. Actually rushing with four, maybe rushing with five. Looks like they may be playing a drop eight again, only rushing with three. Simeon Price in the backfield. Rodgers across the middle. Found his receiver, Rufus Harvey, sitting there in the open coverage, and that's going to be a first down after seven yards, brought down by Tennyson. Yeah, a little bit surprised that the defensive selection of Chris Partridge there playing some zone covers only rushing with three they're playing with good eyes though again keeping an eye on Will Rogers but that's just an even better job of Harvey at finding the zone hole sitting down picking up the first fresh set of downs with that pass Rogers now eighth all-time in SEC yardage history passing Jared Lorenzen First down and 10, give the ball to Marks, had to come out for the play, back on the field after three, and that was Brown there for the tackle. You see that list of prolific quarterbacks in this league. The late Jared Lorenzen, everybody chasing Aaron Murray and his brilliant career at Georgia. So second and seven. Marks motions out. Again, the middle of the field open for Harvey. And Lewis, I don't know why they go away from that. It's getting them seven yards a pop, that time six, bringing up a third and short. It's, it sure is. Look, it, it's been it's been good in terms of it being a high percentage throw. But just think about it like this. I mean, Will Rogers has thrown the football 34 times already in this game and still doesn't have 200 yards passing. So you have to tip your cap right now to Chris Partridge, the defensive coordinator for Ole Miss because they are executing the game plan, keeping a lid on the big plays, just like it's designed to do. It's essentially an extension of the run for Ole Miss tonight. These short, high percentage passes, play clock down at six. There was movement up front, nothing thrown. However, yeah, they did throw the flag on the give to Marks. This will be a big penalty either way. And it's gonna be against Ole Miss, who's gonna be a first down anyway. That Jaquavian Marks down on the field again. If there's something he just can't shake right now and, and get right and stay on the field. Yeah, so he had mentioned we had seen him in a non-contact injury earlier in the second half. He came off the field for a couple of plays, came back out on. Had enough there for the first down. But the penalty on Old Miss is going to move the chains anyway. And welcome back into the booth, Lewis Riddick, Matt Berry alongside. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone out there. And, and Lewis, this was an egg bowl we set up with the offenses. And right now it's kind of been a chess match between Mike Leach and Lane Kiffin. But you have to credit the defenses here towards the end of the third quarter for making plays when they need them most. Yeah, they sure have. Look, both defenses have played pretty good in the red area. Um, 
Mississippi State in particular has really been able to play some stout defense down there. Lane Kiffin getting a little frustrated with his football team. But yeah, this is going to be a chess match all the way through here. A chess match between how do you limit these explosive offenses from getting a shot over the top, but then you just don't want them to kind of like death by a thousand cuts you down the field too much either, because then that just makes your defense even more worn out because they're playing so many plays. So Great chess match going on. You mentioned the red zone possessions. Five trips for Ole Miss, just the one touchdown. Dylan Johnson in the game now for Marks. First down, Rodgers hits Johnson out of the backfield. We had talked about it all night. These two running backs lead the SEC first and second, respectively, for receptions out of the backfield. They're check down machines. When everything's <laughs> covered, go get five yards out of the backfield. Yeah, I'm telling you, look, Chris Partridge, I've said his name many times at D.C. for... Ole Miss is determined to not let them get any shot plays over the top. They're going to play the percentages, but they'll be able to get off the field and make a key play at some point in time. Just don't have the ball thrown over your head. Second and four after six. Rodgers across the middle of the field. What a great job by Will Rogers to climb up in the pocket, create some space to find Harvey, and move the chains for the Bulldogs after 16. That's exactly what we're talking about as far as Mississippi State's philosophy. Will Rogers just find some time, buy some time. There's only three people rushing. Escape out the pocket, get some clean space, a clean line of sight, and find an open receiver, and receivers get open. Gain on first down for Johnson. I mean, he hit that hole hard to get nine. Otis Reese brings him down. So now you just wonder if the philosophy changes a little bit. Do you want to keep playing drop eight, or do you want to start trying to pressure the line of scrimmage a little bit more? And there goes Johnson again. He's had two big runs, two consecutive plays, and the Bulldogs are in rhythm. Forced out by Finley. I mean, I understand Ben, but don't break. But at some point in time, you got to start dictating to the offense. Look, it's been a good strategy so far. Don't get me wrong. But it might be time to kind of change up the philosophy a little bit if you're Ole Miss and if you're, if you're Mississippi State, just keep doing what you're doing. Rely on the veteran leadership of Will Rogers and the decision-making of Will Rogers to distribute the football effectively. Remember, this drive started at the six-yard line. And it's been the last three plays of Dylan Johnson in for Marks. Ivy brings him down, gain of five. And that in all, well, I don't want to say that with these offenses ending the quarter. We're down to 23 seconds. And a tightly contested battle of the golden egg. It's still Johnson. We will get a playoff here to end the third quarter. Oh, is he going to make you know? Lewis, I was going to give him credit. Hey, let's call the ball play. Let's, let's get let's the ball play before the fourth the quarter. quarter. Roger's like, you know what? We're going to take it. I'm going to throw my fours in the air. <laughs> We're going to let the clock run out. Everybody throws the fours in the air. We used to do that back in the late, late 80s, man. But were those games on television? Come on now. I know. Oh, we've got a good one in the Egg Bowl. 16-14, Mississippi State driving. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. You're also watching DJ KO just spin the ones and twos. <laughs> Club Oxford, where you were? <laughs> he had them. Put your hands up. Put your hand. He had them going. Hey, also want to send love out to everyone working back in Bristol on this game, working so hard on Thanksgiving. We love you guys. It's been a remarkable season. Joe McCoy producing it. Ed Curran directing it. Look at the crew. Thank you to everyone, the crew, for this season. So second and five now for Mississippi State. Rodgers, time, out of the backfield. But who was there? J.J. Pagis. He might get a helmet sticker on college football final on Saturday. He's going to get something. Loss of four. That's... Good play recognition, stops his rush, realizes that the back is just leaking out in the flat, running the little flare control. And I'll just take one of these two. I'll make a big play out here on the perimeter. Dylan Johnson had been a headache for Ole Miss. And he just lost yardage there to bring up a third and nine. So Johnson banged up on the play. 
Here comes Marks. Big play for the Ole Miss defense. Whistle before the snap. Timeout. Mississippi State. They're second. So Mike Leach didn't like the ball play they had on. His second timeout already. We'll this see if that comes back. Timeout. timeout to the game like this. One score game, Lewis. So Leach didn't like the play that was on. Third and nine coming up as Saturday's rivalry weekend in college football matchups. SEC Network and the ESPN app. Three Eastern, two Central. Louisville ranks number 25. Take on Kentucky, 34th annual Governor's Cup. Wildcats have won the last three. They've all been beatdowns. 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central, 117th meeting between Tennessee and Vandy. The ball's looking to bounce back. Hendon Hooker. Sad story with him blowing out his ACL and the loss to South Carolina. What a season he's had. It's going to be Joe Milton the rest of the way. And what about Vandy? Two wins in a row against last week against Florida. Let's see if Clark Lee can keep that thing going here. Third and nine. First things first. Marks in the backfield. Rodgers has to take it himself. Can he get there? Short. Ball on the ground. They That's give the ball to Ole Miss Troy Brown on the recovery. I was about to say, that is a big time hit by Troy Brown. The transfer from Central Michigan. From our angle up here, it's hard to see whether or not that ball was coming out before Will Rogers hit the ground. I'd be stunned if he wasn't down. That ball looked like it came out late. Running on the field was a fumble recovered by Ole Miss. His elbow's yeah, he's down. down. That's that's gonna get that's gonna be an easy work for Mitch Wilkins, our replay official. Yeah, the ball was kind of shielded from us, from our view here in the booth. You can see it clearly there. Elbow down. He still has control of the ball. You know, because it's Thanksgiving and we're thankful for Matt Austin working with us all season. Let's bring in Matt Austin just to talk with him because we know Will Rogers is gonna be called down. Matt Austin, this is when life is easy for you, right? Is it official? Oh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> Matt Austin, thank you. <laughs> simple and direct. As simple That's as right. this call is going to be, <laughs> is as simple as Matt Austin made that. You know, we caught him like mid-bite of mashed potatoes. <laughs> oh, God. After further review, the runner was down prior to losing possession of the ball at the 16 and a half yard line. Fourth down, Mississippi State. And Lewis, why that is big, because he got just enough yardage to get Mississippi State a more comfortable field goal attempt. I'll leave that one alone. This is in a one score game down two. And I mean, this game just remains tight again. The snap and hold operation here is going to be critical. It's going to absolutely be critical. Massimo Biscardi, the place kicker for Mississippi State. 34-yard attempt. It's wet. So like you said, snap and hold paramount. 34 yards for the lead. It is good. And Mississippi State regains the lead off the foot of Massimo Biscardi. It is a one-point game in Oxford. We've got a good finish to the Egg Bowl. Bulldogs up 17-16. Eli Manning in attendance tonight. An old Miss great here. We actually had a dinner last night at City Grocery down there in the square. And old Eli Manning, Archie Manning, and their wives were a couple tables down. I crushed a shrimp and grits last night. You took pictures of it. Dude. Absolutely crushed it. I didn't know you were a food picture taker, I'm not, poster I can't, guy. You know, I, I'm not. And, and people that do that, I, I yeah, yeah. But you were one I of those wanted, people. I get it. I get it. I know. When I saw it, I was like, really? You're a food poster. 
<laughs> and I, I'm not hating on food posters. That's a specific I didn't know you brand were. of the food poster. Yeah, I, didn't okay. know, I didn't know you were that dude. Look but what I'm about to eat. I'm learning a lot about you. Speaking of eating, let's see if Quinshawn Judkins can eat here in this Ole Miss running attack. To 76 yards on the night, 67 for him. 12 for Dart. Rain is coming down. Wildcat to Judkins. Ball spotted at the 25. End around to Dayton Wade. And Wade, a nice little gain on first down after seven. Brought down by Jet Johnson. That's a nice job by Lane Kipman of putting Judkins in the Wildcat. Now you have to really account for the fact that Judkins could run it. He could hand it off. And on these zone read type of actions. Now you just got to be secure with the ball handling. You just cannot have any issues with that. Early movement, finger pointing as Judkins was still back in there at quarterback. False start. 54 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. But how much trust is Lane Kippen showing in the young freshman here in a rivalry game, one score game, the rain's coming down. And he's handling the football in that kind of situation. Now you got Jackson Dart back in the game. So second and eight after the penalty. Dart pressured, tries to get out of it and can't. What an effort by Watson, who continues to be a thorn in Ole Miss's side. Second set. These eight-gap pressures between Nathaniel Watson and Jet Johnson, it's something that Zach Arnett, the defensive coordinator, loves to do. And these guys are constantly firing the A and B gaps and coming downhill and just disrupting everything inside out. I mean, Watson's just having himself a night. Now third and 22. Dart looked like he was just going to tuck it and run and does so unsuccessfully. Randy Charlton and this Zach Arnett defense may have just had their best possession of the night. That's going to bring up fourth and 26 in the punting unit from their own end zone. Well, look, head coach Mike Leach said in our call, he said the defense has been trending up as far as the defensive line. They've got some pretty decent athletes that they are playing better and better. And these linebackers, the linebackers, Watson, Jet Johnson, Tyrus Wheat, they have been the big difference makers in this game. And how big have special teams been from Mississippi State? Mason gets the punt off. Xavier Thomas going to play it safe and fair catch it after a punt of 46. So we talked about the defense. Mississippi State, five sacks on the night. None bigger than these two. Right now, Hale State up one. Start of the fourth quarter. Week 12, Monday Night Football matchup. Steelers Colts, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Monday Night Countdown starts our coverage. An amazing halftime ceremony tonight. For more on who was honored, down to Harry. Yeah, Matt, that's Ben Williams, the first black player to play in a varsity football game for Ole Miss. He had his number 74 jersey retired tonight. You've seen it painted on the field during tonight's broadcast. He's just the fourth player in school's history to have his number retired, joining Archie Manning, Chucky Mullins, and Eli Manning. Williams owns the program record for career sacks of 37, including Ole Miss's single season record of 18 in 1973. Well deserved, Harry. Thank you. That's Marks back in the ball game. And a gain of three. And this could, Lewis, with one timeout left, up 17 16. This is a big drive for this Mississippi State offense. Yeah, you just get the feeling with this rain coming down and the weather deteriorating, is this game going to be decided on an error, a ball handling error? Someone putting the ball on the ground, providing a short field for the offense. It just has that feel to it. Marks, big game. Mm -hmm. Found the right side, lowered his shoulder. Young brings him down after nine yards in Ole Miss territory. Watch right guard Cole Smith right there with a nice block against Otis Reese. And Jaquavius Marks, he has shown you all night long that he has special acceleration once he gets into the open field. Just eight yards for the Ole Miss offense here in the second half. Great job by the Mississippi State defense at that. And another nice first down play to Wally. And that's going to be just short of a first down after a gain of nine. You can see Wally covering up with two hands. 
as the Ole Miss defense is trying to strip and punch at that football and see if they can test his ball security. You know, in these adverse weather conditions. These are the situations now, man, where, look, your mental focus really comes into play. So they charted that at eight yards. Brown brings him down. And March is going to be inches shy of a first down. It's Ole Miss that comes into this game, Lewis, with the prolific running attack. But right now, Ole Miss with Marks. Out rushing the Rebels. And I think they're going to bring out the sticks to give this a measure, probably at the request of one Mike Leach. Russian yards tonight, Mississippi State 71 to Ole Miss's 58. Nobody in America would have bet that that would be the, the stat line in the Russian category at this point in the football game. But Mississippi State's offensive line right from the very first drive has had a very good handle on the run game. They played physical up front. And also, look, go give Ole Miss credit. They have made the plays when they have been there to be made, forcing some turnovers, playing good bend but don't break type of defense. And here, now they've got a bow up here on this third and one type of situation. Every possession critical as we move inside of 10 minutes. Has not been the explosive game we thought. Right. 288 total yards for Mississippi State, 226 for Ole Miss. Well, you know, both defenses have done a great job they of have. taking away what the other team wants to do. And they've forced you to adapt. And that's th this game has turned into a beautiful chess match. So here's a big third and one. Both Marks and Simeon Price in the backfield situated next to Will Rogers. It's going to be Marks, and it's going to be a first down. He is running on a mission. Young brings him down, gain of nine, and the drive continues for the Bulldogs. There's tremendous vision on the part of Jaquavius Marks. Get that ball downhill, you see Aishim Young. We talked about it early. He's the big hitter in the secondary for Ole Miss. Doesn't wrap up, tries to just throw a shoulder in there. That is something that Chris Partridge, the defensive coordinator, said is one of his weak points. He needs to wrap up on contact, and you see what happens when you don't against a back like Marks who goes 210 pounds and running like he's 2,000 pounds tonight as far as his sturdiness and ability to break tackles. Battling injuries throughout the night, back on the sidelines again. First and 10, Dylan Johnson, he's been productive. I'm telling you, these guys are out here scrapping at the line of scrimmage now. They know how critical every play is and every possession is, especially, again, as the weather deteriorates here. Both of these teams have had a tough time moving the football, sustaining any drives. And field position now, field goals, they can be the difference in this game. Lewis, when we set this up, it was Ole Miss's third-ranked rushing offense. Again, Mississippi State's ninth-ranked passing offense. Tonight, it's been the Bulldogs on the ground. And again, they try to pound it up there with Simeon Price. That's how you shoot the gap, Ashanti Sistrunk. You got to come downhill in this running game now here. I mean, we're, we're here deep in the fourth quarter. You can see what Mississippi State is wanting to do. Mike Leach is saying, hey, look, let's just put it in the hand of these backs. Our backs have been productive all year long. Jaquavius Marks fighting off some kind of injury. Well, the linebackers, hey, it's your time now. You got to step up. You got to fill gaps here, but they're going to keep running this football. Third and six. Ball at the 22. Rodgers to throw. Has a receiver wide open. Ra, Ra Thomas. 21 yards. I think we have an assignment error by Miles Battle down here at the bottom of the screen at the right corner position. You saw immediately him turn inside and communicate with his safeties. Looked like there was some kind of miscommunication. 
That's the only way receivers get that open. Double moves or miscommunication. You see Miles Battle down here at the bottom of the screen. And as the play goes, look, he's playing short zone coverage and doesn't have a safety rolling over the top. The safety is inside. And you can see him put his hands up in the air. Somebody didn't communicate the call. He was injured after the play. You know, there's been a trend going around, Lewis, where a receiver will score. They will start a celebration dance and then grab their hamstring. This that, does not appear to be one of those cases. I didn't see that one. The, the, yeah, the announcer's been falling for it, but <laughs> Ra-Ra was legitimately injured on the play. A critical error right there. Critical, critical communication error. Those are the kind of things you, you just can't have happen in a one-score game like this. I mean, safeties and corners have to be on the same page, especially when you're getting down there in the high red area, fringe red area, where you don't have any time to make up for mistakes in assignment. So McCarty's extra point attempt is good. It is now an eight-point lead for the visiting Mississippi State Bulldogs, who have lost two in a row in this Egg Bowl series. Big play from Rodgers. He finds Ra Ra. We've got Hale State up 24 16 midway through the fourth quarter. What a drive for Mississippi State up 24 16 here in the 119th meeting. The Battle of the Golden Egg. Dubbed the Egg Bowl, 1978. We've got a classic brewing here with Ole Miss now down eight. Midway through the fourth quarter, they're gonna have to find something on offense quickly as we take a look at who's winning together, brought to you by Dave and Busters. Look, this running game for Mississippi State has just been old schoolish. You wanna play light boxes, you wanna like make sure that you keep a lid on the explosive plays, well then, Will Rogers is just gonna check in the runs. And then here, this shouldn't have been one of those situations where Ra Ra Thomas has that much open grass to work with. That's just a communication error between Miles Battle and the safety. Now that's how you lose football games when you make those kind of errors, but great job of Mississippi State capitalizing. Quinshot Judkins on first down. Ole Miss in their second half drives, four of them, three, three and outs, and a loss of down. There's just not been a lot of room inside there. The big men from Mississippi State, Cameron Young, Jaden Crumity, Randy Charlton, these guys have just been studs all night. 13 tackle for losses for Mississippi State's defense. As Dart rolls out, takes the high percentage throw, a good shot from him to Dayton Wade, and that'll be a first down. Ole Miss gain a 10. And Ole Miss wants to run the football. They're one of the most prolific rushing attacks in all of college football. But this may come down to the arm of Jackson Dart. Mingo out of the backfield. Mississippi State's defense was there. It was dropped. Jackie Matthews had that sniffed out immediately. And that's the third drop of the night by Mingo. You just cannot say enough about the safeties on this Mississippi State team. Jackie Matthews, Colin Duncan, Jalen Green, and we've talked about linebacker Nathaniel Watson. These guys have been balling tonight. Speed, intensity, hitting ability, and Ole Miss isn't helping themselves with Mingo dropping passes like that. The officials are meeting at the 32-yard line. Perhaps a discussion if the pass was thrown backwards. There's a look. See, there's Jackson. It's close. Matt Austin, that's why we have him here, our rules analyst with us tonight. Matt, what do you see on that play? Well, it's extremely close, but if you watch the line judge at the bottom, he punches backwards. That means it's a backwards pass in his opinion. So he's ruling this as a loose football, and the Mississippi State did recover it immediately. So I think the ruling on the field is going to be Mississippi State's ball. Replay, I know, is looking at it, and it's very, very close. I'm not sure you could overturn it with the views I've seen. Yeah. 
And you see Jackson right here about the 29 where his left foot is. He catches it. Ah. There was an inadvertent whistle on the play while the ball was loose. We'll replay the down. First down. So the play doesn't even exist after an inadvertent whistle. Interesting. I did not have that on the bingo card. I didn't either. It's like, well. Of all the things it could have been, I was not going inadvertent whistle. We're just going to ignore that play. We are. That one's up in space. Mike Leach is like, what? Yeah, he, he definitely what, wants what, an explanation. What? Arnett, he wants an explanation. The previous play is under further review. All right, so now, Matt Austin, I'm going to ride you here because how could a play be under review that was an inadvertent whistle? Well, I, again, this is all assumption, but when the, when the pass was not caught, the, one of the officials blew it dead. But that's what, exactly what replay is here for. If there is an immediate recovery in the or recovery in the immediate continuing action, then you can give the ball to the defense, uh, but they can't advance it. So really inadvertent whistles don't come into play you know, very often since we have replay. So then why announce inadvertent whistle and not just go to the replay booth knowing that it was going to be that close? Why even bring the inadvertent whistle into play? Uh, I'm not sure. You know, looking at the replay there, that doesn't look like a backwards pass. I mean, maybe I'm looking at that I'm not getting the right proper angle. Yeah, can we cue that back up? Because you had mentioned his feet. I think, well, where, where's the ball, ball when he right. releases it right? It's not about his feet. I mean, I'm just saying where his left foot was at about the at about the 29-yard right, line. So. so if the ball is basically... I think that... That looks like a lateral pass to me. That doesn't look like a backward pass. It, it, and if it is, it's by a matter of inches. So Mitchell Wilkins is our replay official. And, Lewis, this call at this stage in the game. In essence, can be the game. With where the ball is spotted with Mississippi State clearly recovering if they rule it a right. backwards pass. Yeah, the, the only thing to keep in mind the is... The bottom of your screen, he rules that... How does he have a, even a good angle to rule that, though, where he's looking at it from? Go ahead, Matt. That's Austin. not a very good angle for him. Well, he doesn't have a great angle, but the mechanics of the crew is the line judge rules forward or backwards pass. So that that's his call all the right. way. I got you. Um, and you mentioned it's a lateral. Backwards right, passes, forward passes have to be forward. Anything sideways or backwards is a backward pass by rule. So if this right. was truly a lateral, as you said, that would make right. it backwards. Yep. I mean, you, you talk so many instances in this rivalry with, yep. with plays that have come down to the end. Have another look at the line, Judge. You want to focus on him. He's at the bottom of your screen at the 35-ish yard line. Well, it sounds like this is going to be, and this should be Mississippi State's ball. But I'm with you on the angle. Yeah, I mean, it... I mean, as Matt was just saying, look, the mechanics of the situation deem that he makes that call. It's just that it's a it's a tough angle for him to see it at, and we still don't even have a real good angle at on the replay. Fans yeah, and what the replay officials looking at is Lane Kiffin. I mean, everybody's getting impatient. Go ahead, Matt. Well, what the official looks at is where does the ball leave the quarterback's hand? What yard line is that? And then where is it first touch? So it's right. not feet. It's the hand when the hand leaves the, mm -hmm. when the ball leaves the hand. Right. All right. Here comes the announcement. After further review, the pass was backwards. In the immediate continuing action after the whistle blew, there was a recovery by, recovery by number 44 for Mississippi State. It will be first and ten, Mississippi State at the 30-yard line. What a call in favor of Mississippi State. And you could read Lane Kiffin's lips. He said, but you blew the whistle. Yeah. I mean, look, Matt walked us through it beautifully here, though, as far as the mechanics of the situation and how they come to this conclusion, as far as the mechanics, how they're supposed to work. The whistle is what throws That's it all into what? Exactly the right. The whistle is what you, makes it all start to melt when you I, I, I mean I, I put Matt Austin on the stand with that one and 
He said he didn't even know. This is fans now throwing stuff on the field from the student section in the end zone. You certainly don't want it to escalate to that point. And so they'll... Yeah, we don't want to have that. They're going to hold play. until they calm down these fans. You know, these rivalry games are passionate enough in and of itself, but if it escalates to the point where students are losing their temper, someone can get hurt. But Harry, what do you got down there? Matt, I can tell you the main things that are coming from the crowd are strictly from the student section. You've got some on either side of the field, but the student section, you're definitely seeing a bunch of cans being thrown down onto the field here. Lane Kiffin still trying to get answers. This one we talked about for quite some time, the decision after the whistle, an inadvertent whistle, and Dylan Johnson's gonna get a gain of five on first down. You're all miss here. You've got to force a turnover. You've got to tackle the football. You've got to put your pads on the football. You've got to punch the football. You've got to test their ball security. Please reset the game clock to six minutes, 57 seconds. Six, five, seven. All right, so they just made an announcement. Thank you. Things were still being thrown on the field. Second and five now. And Will Rogers, he's not going to be in any hurry to get this playoffs. The play clock trots down inside 10, down to four. And they're going to do that probably the rest of the way. Cutting outside. Big game. Here goes Mississippi State. Dylan Johnson. Marked out at the one yard line and a gain of 24. You lose force principles on the edge. These running backs have showed you all night, whether it be Dylan Johnson or Jaquavius Marks, they have shown a second gear tonight to really accelerate once they get out into space. And you see it there, 13, with Darius Tennyson not able to keep that run boxed in. And that's just a crushing run for Ole Miss's defense at this point in the game. The previous play is under further review. The good thing on the field was the runner was short of the goal line. So they will now have a look to see if Dylan Johnson gets in. You see Tennyson, he's got force, gets caught inside too far, taking on the block of Austin Williams. You see him extend. He was still in bounds yeah. at the extension. See the football touch the front of the pylon, right? Does the wrist hit? That's a heck of an effort on the part of Dylan Johnson. Let's bring in Matt Austin while Mitch Wilkins reviews this. Matt, what do you see? Well, this is extremely close. Lewis said it exactly right. He stretched out. Did he put the ball down out of bounds before it touched the pylon? If the ball was still airborne and it hits the pylon and he hasn't touched out of bounds, it's a touchdown. But if that ball touches the white on the ground first, then it would be out of bounds at the two-inch line. Yeah, this is awful close. I mean, what a great effort right here to extend. Ball's it, out. This will be the view. Oh, it's hard to hear. Here, this is a better angle here. And that's a touchdown. That looks like the tip of that ball hits the pylon. And I'm telling you, down in My that end zone. My bet is that's a touchdown. Down in that end zone was where they were just having issues a moment ago after the 
fumble reversed for that Mississippi left, State. That left foot is inbounds. The goal line extends. He extends it. I say touchdown. Now it becomes the question, Lewis. You've got to have enough evidence to overturn the call on the field, which was down at the one. That looks like enough evidence to me. It's close. Here comes the call. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Okay. So stands is translation for not enough right. to overturn. Yeah, that was, that was very, very close. I could go either way. But man, what a good run on the part of Dylan Johnson. And now if you're Ole Miss, you got to find a way. You have to find a way to get this ball out and not let... You got to find a way. So first and goal, Mississippi State. The last three minutes of this game are hard for even us to describe with what we've seen happen here late fourth quarter. Clock will run after the first down. Price and Johnson in the backfield. Can Mississippi State put the Egg Bowl away? Snap. Johnson stopped. Great job by Ivy in that Ole Miss front to get the Johnson there and keep him short of the goal line. You see him trying to punch at that football, pull up the football, test Dylan Johnson's ball. So, I mean, that's exactly what you got to do here. I mean, this is the toughest of circumstances if you're Ole Miss in their defense. Mississippi State has been running the football with noticeable physicality all game long, and Dylan Johnson has just been going here late in this fourth quarter. Clock winding down. Rodgers fumbles the ball. That's exactly what we're talking about. That's Tavious exactly what's Robinson. needed. You have got to be kidding me. Ole Miss minutes away from putting this away, and Will Rogers puts the ball on the ground, and now the Rebels with 448 left. Down eight with three timeouts have an opportunity to go down and tie it. This is the drive of the season, but this, this is exactly what we're talking about, ball security, right? They had to find a way to get the ball out. And there it is. There it is right now. Trey Brown, that left hand. You see Will Rogers isn't able to really secure the football. It's wet conditions out there. You know the ball slick. Any kind of hit on your arms is going to dislodge that football. Excellent job. So Quinshot Judkins in the backfield. Ball spotted at the one. Can the true freshman give them some space? Not much, if anything, brought down by Charlton. The last six minutes of this game, regardless of the outcome, will go down in Egg Bowl infamy. And now Ole Miss has to go 99 yards. Dart over the middle, caught. That was Wade. If you're Ole Miss, someone on the outside has to get loose on a double move or something. Something where it's a play action type of pass that they can pick up the first down here and just set someone up for a double move and a shot over the top. Third and three, play fake, out of the backfield. Dart has his man. That's Watkins, and that's going to be a first down Ole Miss. Now's when you take the shot. Now see if you can take the shot play and get someone on a double move, get someone slipping, playing with poor eyes. Dart thinks about it. Has a receiver. That's Heath. Tries to squeeze it in there. But Green, great coverage on Malik Heath. And it falls incomplete. Second down. The safeties have been playing great all game long. They have just made play after play. Green, Duncan, Jackie Matthews have been making plays all game. Have kept a lid on this defense. Ole Miss got loose a few times. And specifically remembering Jonathan Mingo's drop pass that would have been a touchdown early in the game. Pop. Wade, space. 
Brought down by Richardson, gain of 11, another first down Mississippi. Some point you gotta get some chunks. You gotta get some explosives in here. They're gonna go all tempo all the way, dart to the sideline. What a throw and grab by Malik Heath. That is gonna be a gain of 20. Good job picking up the blitz. And that's what we're talking about right here. Now if you're, if you're Mississippi State, you gotta start tightening up your coverage a little bit. And it's gonna be movement on Ole Miss. The two receivers down at the bottom of the screen couldn't get their alignment right. Or all 11 for that matter. So three timeouts left, Lewis, for Ole Miss and yep. Lane Kiffin. Three timeouts, 312 on the clock. You have time. Even if Mississippi State wants to play a soft zone, find the zone holes, get up. You, you're used to working with tempo. Zach Garnett's unit has been so good tonight. Can Quinshawn finally get loose? 75 yards on the night. Here comes Tempo again. Here comes Quinshawn Judkins again. Brought down by Weeks. It's going to bring up a third and three. And they're not wasting any time. They're getting right up to the line of scrimmage. Dart kept it. Mississippi State read it. Deshaun Page. And what a nice call. Look, that's where you look. In those third and short type of situations, that's when you start sending some pressure. Force the situation. Don't just sit back. They're going to want to run the zone read. Let's make it difficult for Jackson Dart to make a quick decision. Here comes fourth down. Here comes the pressure. Dart over the middle. What a catch. Jordan Watkins. Pressure came. Dart got it to Watkins. Jet Johnson was there. That's going to be a first down. Dart with the dart. Look, look at this. He's getting pressure right in his face, fading back. And Jordan Watkins with the contested catch away from his body in these conditions where the ball's soggy, your hands are wet, your gloves are probably wet, defensive back all over you. Jackie Matthews been making plays all game long. I mean, that's big time. Big time throw and catch. And a night where Mingo's had some drops. We saw him drop a potential touchdown early. Malik Heath had a drop. Right now, the receivers for Ole Miss with 2.05 left in the game and three timeouts. That was the game right there on Absolutely. fourth down. That's the biggest catch of the game, where it matters the most. The transfer from Louisville keeps the drive alive. So far, 10 plays, 55 yards. And you can see defensive coordinator Zach Arnett trying to change it up, change it up from playing coverage with two safeties high to then blitzing, going zero pressures, five-man pressures. And what a great chess match. Lane versus Zach Arnett. This is pretty cool. It's what it's going to come down to, an Egg Bowl classic. See it finish after this. A busy college football Friday, including a spot in the American on the line. Tulane, Cincinnati gets started noon Eastern on ABC. Look at us getting it started here at the Egg Bowl. First down, Jackie Matthews, the injured player. He's in the tent. Dart five of six on this drive. He's going to keep it himself. Does just enough to stay up. Forced out of bounds by Johnson. Gain a six, still three timeouts for the Rebels. Yeah, one thing that Mississippi State has to be conscious of is the fact that Jackson Dart, you cannot sleep on his athletic ability. He's already shown you he can get outside the pocket and buy time and pick up first downs with his legs. Got to keep him contained. They've kept Quinshot Judkins contained for the most part tonight. Charlton first man there. Now third down after a loss of one. Another big critical moment here. You figured what, you're going to get maybe some man coverage? Third down, quick shot outside Mingo. And it's going to bring up another fourth down. This one inches. They just converted on fourth and long. Minute 38 left. Direct snap to Judkins. Can he get outside? There goes Judkins. 
Judkins, first down, Ole Miss. Jalen Green missed the tackle. Drive continues, gain of 12. They get in that tight bunch formation at the top of the screen. He's got big Nick Broker pulling around the edge, and Judkins doing what he does best, man. Two fourth down conversions, play fake the dart, has the receiver wide open! Folks, I think we have another coverage bust. Another miscommunication between the corner, the Cameron Richardson and the safety. Quarter playing short zone coverage. Doesn't have anybody rolling over the top. You'll see it right here at the top of your screen. Watch the corner, watch the safety, how shallow he is. Watch what the corner does. He's just jamming and expecting a safety to be over top. That's classic cover two posture and doesn't have a safety deep. So now the two point conversion after the longest touchdown drive of the season to tie the Egg Bowl with a minute 25 left. Time out, Ole Miss, their first. So Ole Miss is gonna use their first timeout. Dayton Wade, the walk on. <laughs> has now put Ole Miss in a situation where they can tie this game with a minute 25 left. You see a nice slippery inside release and then fade back to the boundary. Dayton Wade, the guy who continues to gain the trust of this coaching staff throughout this season. OC Charlie Weiss talked about it. The more and more he made plays, I mean, Lane even said, hey, look, all these, all these guys we got at wide receiver, all these studs we got, and here we are in the biggest of moments throwing it to the guy that paid, that probably you thought they would least likely throw it to. Great story for Dayton Wade coming up big. Mississippi State had the ball first and goal to go to put it away. Will Rogers fumbles. We're talking about ball security all second half as soon as this rain started coming down and you see will rogers just doesn't secure it any little hit on his forearm on his hands is probably going to dislodge it given the conditions 99 yards longest touchdown drive of the season pagese is in at fullback timeout Ole miss their second charge timeout this will be a 30 second timeout that heavy package with KD Hill, Pagese, and Mason Brooks all heavy in the block as we take a look at this final drive after the fumble. Ole Miss recovers, and then Lewis, little by little, there on fourth down to Watkins. Judkins again on fourth down. They had to convert two of them. I mean, big critical situational football plays being made by the Ole Miss offense. Jackson Dart with that throw on fourth down with pressure in his face, fading back. Jordan Watkins with probably the best catch of the night. Defensive back draped all over him. Jackie Matthews. I mean, just big time play after play by these guys. And now here, here's again the chess match. So jumbo package now off the field. Now they got four wides out there. Ten personnel, no tight end. I haven't Jud had any tight end all night. Judkins in the backfield. This to tie it. Dart, quick pass. Shovel in the middle. Falls incomplete. Mississippi State has it, and they're going to rule it incomplete. Randy Charlton was able to get his hands on it. They faked the pitch to Judkins and tried to shovel it up in there. And a great job by Mississippi State. Look, it's a great play call on the part of Lane Kiffin. He has it dialed up perfectly. But it's even better play by Randy Charlton. Watch the quick reaction right there. I mean, that, he plays the quarterback. He sees Broker pulling. He says, something's up here. And he stops. I mean, just look at that. Wow. Look at that. That's athletic. I'm playing the quarterback and I play the shuffle pass at the same time. This defensive line has come up big all night long. All night long. They have made play after play when they've needed to. What a great effort on the part of Ole Miss to come down the field and make play after play as well. 
And what a great game. I mean, this has just been a great battle back and forth. And the transfer from UCF comes into the Magnolia State, its biggest game of the year, and halts the two-point conversion. So here comes the onside kick. And with everything we've seen tonight, anything's possible. Correct. <laughs> it is not over. Jonathan Cruz gets the onside assignment. Mississippi State's going to call a timeout. Mississippi State, their third and final timeout of the second half. This will be a 30-second timeout. College Football Rivalry Weekend begins Thanksgiving night. Two of our featured matchups, Florida takes on Florida State Friday. Number six, USC hosts number 15, Notre Dame at the Coliseum. Back-to-back -back nights of fun, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, ABC, and the ESPN app. So Lewis with the onside kick and the hands team on for Mississippi State. Lane burns two of those timeouts on the two-point conversion. Mississippi State, at this point, recover, you win. Yeah, this is the ball game. I mean, again now, I've been saying it all second half, ever since this rain started coming down, that changes everything. It changes everything as far as how sure-handed you are. Good kick. Cruz, fake, goes back to the other side. Can he get the hop? And Mississippi State recovers. J.P. Purvis likely puts that golden egg 90 miles back to Starkville. They had lost two in a row in this series. Mike Leach had yet to beat Lane Kiffin. And when it's all said and done, Lewis, Ole Miss could probably point to their inefficiency in the red zone early in the game. There's no question about it. You go one for four in the red zone, it's exactly what plagued them last week. It's what Lane talked about at halftime. I mean, look, you can point to many different plays. People can pick apart this game however they want as far as missed opportunities on the part of, of Ole Miss, the drop pass by, by Mingo that surely probably would have been a touchdown in your first half. But look, this is, this is just, that's the way these kind of games go. That's the way football goes. Miss. And you can point to Mississippi State and, and their bad fortune in the final drive. And they kind of put it you could. You could dissect you this thing. You could go back and forth. But However you stand on it, you're right. You can make the case for good calls, bad calls. But that's just football. It's not a perfect game. Mike Leach and this team, they lost back-to-back -back games to Kentucky and Alabama. Come back and beat Auburn in what was a sloppy game. Got beat big by Georgia. Came back last week and win 56 to 7 to ETSU. But all that's going to happen now, and who would have thought this a month ago, that Ole Miss and Mississippi State are going to both end their seasons with eight and four records. I mean, this was incredible. What a. What a way for us to end the regular season on Thursday night football, man. I mean, great rivalry game, lots of emotion, lots of situational football here down the stretch. The weather becomes a factor. Two high-powered offenses in different ways have to play the patient game until here late in the football game. And that's when the action starts to heat up. The running game's a factor for the team you didn't think it would be that big of a factor for and was a non-factor for the team. That's one of the best rushing teams in college football. That's why you play the game. And Mississippi State comes into Vaught Hemingway Stadium, and they are bringing the Golden Egg home. Ole Miss ends the season. Losing three straight, four of their last five. People are going to be pointing at the future of this program as Mike Leach finally gets his victory over Lane Kiffin. 
Lewis, you said it best. What a Thursday night run it's been for us on this crew. This has been, it's been awesome, man. It's been awesome. We started the season with a bang, the backyard brawl, high drama all the way to the very end. We ended here with the Egg Bowl for the regular season. High drama all the way to the end. The bands, the pageantry, the fan bases, the passion. I mean, it, we, 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 we've been fortunate all year long, man. And it's just gotten better and better. What a pleasure it's been. Joe McCoy produced it, Ed Curran directed it. For Harry Lyles, Lewis Riddick, I'm Matt Barry. What a Thursday night season it's been, capped off by Mississippi State, getting their win in the Egg Bowl. 24-22 the final from Oxford. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the college football weekend. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the Southeastern Conference.